What is happening, Internet? Welcome back to K-Wings Let's Plays. How's everybody doing? And tonight is a special stream that is not Crash Bandicoot. Uh, on The Flash. Uh, movie trailer, or movie, sorry. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm fading. I'm phasing through reality right now. I'm having, <laughs> having some issues. Luke is phasing through the, the multiverse. I have no idea how I'm going to do this tomorrow with the Nintendo Direct as well. Plus, people were expecting me to post my Flash review, which is not going to be until... Not tomorrow, because now I have to do the Nintendo Direct thing and the Final Fantasy 16 thing tomorrow. It's going to be crazy. But, yeah, we saw The Flash. Uh, so, if you guys are new to our channel, what we do is when we see DC movies, we play Injustice 2 because it has a uh, bunch of characters that are usually in the movie, more mm -hmm. or less. So, uh, And uh, people like Injustice. We like Injustice. We're still waiting for the next one. So we're going to do our best Yay. to talk about uh, non-spoilers in the beginning and then uh, get to the, the spoilery stuff, the cameos and all that other stuff later on. So let's see. Um, basically, what's going to be happening with our versus thing, though, is only characters that have appeared in The Flash can be in uh, the matches. So that means Batman is okay. Aquaman is okay. Uh, Superman is technically okay. Supergirl. Don't stress out. We're all here for you guys. That's very nice. Um, someone. <laughs> I can't. I don't know what that was. Supergirl's okay, totally. Uh, there's no Keaton Batman skin, but we'll just, you know, it's Batman. It's fine. Batman or Bruce Wayne. There's a lot of Bruce Wayne in the movie. Um, yeah. No Zod in this. Is Wait, is Zod in this one? No. No Zod. Wait, no, how, no. How do I come in? You come in, you come in like that. So Superman is allowed. Oh yeah, Black Adam is your no, Zod. no Black Adam, no Zod in this one. Uh, Wonder Woman is okay. Um, Flash is okay. Supergirl is okay. Batman's okay, and Aquaman's okay. Yeah, so we're not gonna talk about spoilers at the beginning. Yeah. Let's see, Cyborg is mentioned. Cyborg's mentioned, yeah. But uh, not in the movie. whatever, that's fine. Cyborg's mentioned. He's he's fair play. He's fair play. He's fine. Uh, let's see. I guess I will go with... You know what? I'm doing Superman because we're doing... It was me, Geo. Okay. Thank you, Geo. I'm going I'm going Superman. So you go You go Flash. So... Oh, I don't want to be Bizarro, though. That's creepy. Where's regular Superman? There he is. Superman. No. <laughs> Amber's going through. Technically, that one loadout works. Technically, Jay Garrett is. Technically, Jay technically, Garrett. there you go. There, there he is, the Scarlet Speedster. Okay, so the Flash movie. Uh, do we have a Flash stage in this? Or they didn't? They they didn't give us a Flash stage, did they? No. Well, I mean, he goes to Gotham. It's fine. It's fine. He goes. He goes to Gotham. Oh. Yeah, I don't know where I'm supposed to sit closer because you're over there now. Um, where, did I move? You've moved like literally you used to be sitting here. You are moved all the way I over there. I don't know. And you're like huddled over in the corner clutching your neck or something. I, I, I think my head shrunk. That's why. Okay. Right, well, hopefully you guys can hear me. I'm like a mile away from the microphone. I think. Can you guys hear Amber before we start beating each other up in the game? Can you... Usually the mic is in front of me, but Luke's decided to move all the way across the couch. It's picking me up fine, see? So Okay, well, there, there. I don't know what you want. It's been an hour to adjust Okay, I'm, whatever. So anyway, the Flash movie, we saw it this morning. Um, I liked it, like, for the most part. I would probably, in my tier list of DC movies, I'd put it at, like, number four or five. Like, out of all the DC movies that have released in the past 10 years, you know, since 2013. So, I think that's pretty good placement of it. Um, the movie doesn't have anything in there that I would say is, quote, like, risky or controversial, other than having the one controversial actor in the movie. That would be the only really thing controversial with it. Uh, the movie had tons yeah. of reshoots and stuff, so... I'll just um, get... There we go. You're obsessing with this, aren't I you? I am because I can't even see myself in the mic. Then I'm gonna have to turn towards. I'm the mic sorry. Now. Can you can you say that again? I can't see myself in the microphone. Now I'm literally having to turn towards the mic since you're turned away from me. You, you realize you said you can't see yourself in the mic. The the mic has no camera. It's a, it's a inanimate object that just picks up your voice when you speak. Anyway, uh, yeah, I would place Flash uh in my top five tier for all DC uh movies over the microphone moved again. 
Uh, all all DC movies over the past like ten years. It's it's number five for me. Uh, it was it was good. It was it was fun. Uh, the story was actually pretty strong. The acting was good. The mm -hmm. CGI was a little muddy sometimes, but I mean there was a lot of stuff going on. I guess you could say with uh, some of the CGI stuff that was super apparent. Mm -hmm. Um, what else? I liked Michael Keaton in it a lot. Like, Michael Keaton was my favorite part. I was watching the movie and I'm thinking, this is like one of the greatest Batman movies I've seen in so long. Yeah. <laughs> because, like, Keaton's in the movie for like 50 minutes, it feels like. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, I'm surprised they didn't just have the movie be Michael Keaton the movie and then have the Flash as a side character. It did kind of feel like The Flash was a side character in his own movie, which is weird because it, it was titled The Flash, and then they gave Flash like these little things to do, little nuances, so you would know, oh, this is something quirky, so this is this is what Flash would do. It's like, really? Is that okay? Because it was like, Batman had so many cool sequences. Just amazing. I was, yeah. I was blown away, because I didn't even know. I heard things. I heard stuff that Keaton was going to be awesome in the movie, but it was, like, all hearsay from people over the past, like, almost two years. Yeah. And keep in mind, guys and gals, we're just going to talk about... We're not going to do any spoilers until, like, part... We'll announce the spoilers. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, don't worry. The I mean, The Flash, I'm just saying that kind of, but The, the Flash has plenty of stuff to do in the movie, but it did... I mean, they could have probably made two movies out of it. Like, if they had just recorded more footage, they could have done a Flash movie and a Michael Keaton Batman movie. would have been kind of interesting. No, well, I mean, we would have gotten a Michael Keaton, more Michael Keaton as Batman, but you can thank uh, James Gunn and Peter Saffron for being like, nope, not doing that. I would have... That's, yeah. what, that's what Walter Hamada said. Walter Hamada's like, people want more Michael Keaton as Batman. Yeah, that's what I wanted at the end was to continue it with more Michael Keaton. That's what I left the thing. And then at the very end of the movie, they have something happen that kind of is a letdown. And we'll talk about that in the spoiler yeah, you can, section. You can thank James Gunn for that. Yeah. It's like, wow. And it's even the line when the person, you know, when they when that thing happens, like the person is like, "Oh, I was expecting something else," and it's like, we all were. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, basically, the the premise of the movie is the Justice League has been around for I don't know a while, and uh, they don't tell you how many years. They're they're established. Uh, the core members of the Justice League in the Flash universe is Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Flash. Uh, and Cyborg, who's mentioned, um, and yeah, uh, Cyborg is mentioned. No, Aquaman no Green is mentioned. No Green Lantern. No <laughs> Green Lantern, not even mentioned. And no Martian Manhunter, which is yeah. why a lot of people are like, "Wait, does this movie take place in the Justice League universe, or does it take place in the uh, the Snyder Cut?" It's like neither. I don't really know because when he's talking to Ben after helping him. Like, he brings up that he's time traveled before, which people can interpret, uh, like, from the Snyderverse. Yeah. And also, Iris mentions something that she would only know if she was from Zack Snyder's version of the movie. Because Josh Whedon never showed Iris West. Yeah, there is a weird line in the movie in which she says something and then... Or maybe that was another world or something. Nope, like, nope. She, she said say that. she said the line that you're thinking of. Oh. She said it. She said, "I saw. I thought I saw you in a dream once." And he's like, "No, we we went to school together, but uh, you know." And she did. She saw him in the Speed Force, like in the oh. Snyder cut. That yeah. happened. Um, but it didn't happen in the Whedon universe. So it's like the sometimes the film has kind of like a continuity crisis like in the first like probably like the first arc because you don't know andy is has said the director andy machete i think is his name has said that he's a huge fan of um the snyder cut like he mm -hmm. loves he loves Zack snyder's work so but the studio probably wanted him to make a flash movie that was based after the 2017 thing or at least walter hamada did Right. So when Walter Hamada was out, then you could and understand. He some stuff yeah. Snyder. Yeah. You you saw like some conflicting narratives there. Uh, so there was some, so it's kind of almost like 
this this movie takes place after a split timeline between Snyder and Justice League. Maybe I I don't know. So basically, let me explain since Luke has been up since pretty late. Um. So yeah, they mention uh, Cyborg by name. They mention Superman. They show a very small clip of Superman. Boo. They mention. They don't mention Green Lantern. They don't mention uh, Mar Martian Manhunter. They mention Aquaman and make fun of him, which is mean. Um, Didn't make fun of him too much, though. No, not too much, but, you know, like, really. Um, uh, yeah, and then they, uh, so, yeah, and then other than that, um, you get to see in this movie, I don't really know how much I'm allowed to talk about without spoilers. You get to see, obviously... Um, some of Barry's family life, which is very... It's shown in the trailers. It's which fine. is very touching. I think they did a great job with that. Um, obviously, we already met Barry's dad from, I think, another movie. I don't know. I thought it was Snyderverse. Uh, Barry's dad was in the Snyderverse, the same actor. Yeah. He was, so he was that's in, continuity it, from the Snyderverse. He was, in, he was in both movies. Yeah. Snyderverse and, and Whedon had Barry's... Wait, did Whedon's cut have Barry's dad? Well, I know the Snyderverse had Barry's dad. So. Snyderverse had a lot of Barry's stuff. So, yeah, and so that that kind of uh, continues. No, wait, yeah, he wasn't... Um, he, uh, uh, in the um, in the Whedon movie, I was just remembering that Flash draws on the guy's face, all like a cartoon character, uh -huh. when he's visiting his dad. So yeah, the dad is briefly in the 2017 movie. Yeah, the dad is in the Snyderverse a lot, I feel like. Yeah, he has more more substance in, in Zack Snyder's uh, four-hour or longer yep, and, epic. And uh, is it a spoiler about uh, the, the, the member of Krypton family that's in the movie or no? Supergirl? Everyone knows Supergirl's in the and movie. And Supergirl's in the movie, yeah. What did you think of Supergirl? Um, I was very surprised. I really thought that... I think that Sasha Kaye, or Kaje, or Kaye, um, is a... Um, I was very surprised, like, at her acting. Like, I was very surprised. Like, I thought she was gonna... A lot of surprises. I thought that she... Like, a lot of new actors that... You know, I think, like, almost every DC person that's been... Like, young actor has surprised me. Um, you know, Ezra Miller surprised me. Um, why do I keep forgetting? Cy the actor who played Cyborg always surprised me with his acting too. It was really good. Um, when he hadn't done film before. So, yeah, yeah. So I think they always they seem to be able to pick people for the DC films that are like really good actors, but it's like they can't follow through and make a tremendously good product at the end. They seem to have good actors that know their craft, and then. So yeah, uh, like I said, I was very surprised by Sasha Kaye. Um, she has a much different take on Supergirl. I don't know if I really want to spoil it because I think you guys should see the movie because you'll be surprised. <laughs> well, hopefully this is not going to become like a drinking game because <laughs> you've said surprise more times than I can count. It's like I'm thinking everybody's taking a shot every time they hear the word surprise. She, she looks good in her outfit. I think she looks good. And, uh, Her outfit is based on Laura Kent from the Injustice comics. Yeah, actually. And uh, I would say in general, before talking about spoilers and stuff, this movie has a lot of violence in it. And I mean, most superhero movies, I, um, I wouldn't really count that as a thing. But okay. Well, I mean, like people die and stuff. Well, yeah. I mean, superhero movie. Um. And I think that they represent, um, like, the, the Kryptonians really well again. I forgot how good they are at doing that. That The Kryptonians are just I feel unbelievably like... powerful compared to everyone else. I feel like we actually got to see the Kryptonians be more Kryptonian-like in this movie than in Man of Steel. Because Superman was just, like, wiping everybody out left and right. So, I mean, yeah. the Kryptonian army was actually a threat for once. Yeah, that was... Uh, that was my complaint with Man of Steel is I don't and maybe you guys can help me with this But I don't remember the Kryptonian army Being that big of a problem for Henry Cavill Superman. The only thing I remember is he fought uh, the girl who was with Zod and Zod and I I think he fought the big guy that was with Zod too, like the trio of them 
I don't ever remember him dealing with the Kryptonian army. And the Kryptonian army didn't appear that strong. Uh, and here they were, like, yeah. decimating Earth. Like, it was, like... Nobody could stop them. Yeah. Another thing that was really interesting about this movie is that, um, we've raced many times. Barry. You're fine. Like Always another thing that's really interesting about it is it has a lot of levity. So if you want to see a pretty violent film, but also that will make you laugh a lot, then this is the film for you. <laughs> okay, bringing up the. All right. I would say because it it has a lot of humor in it. Well, I mean, you're going to have humor because there has to be a way to explain why, you know, I think, like, the Flash is not a character like Batman or Superman that's super OP. He kind of has to do things his own way, like Luke was explaining. So he does do things in a creative way that most people wouldn't imagine, like, to save people and stuff. So sometimes it's pretty funny. And, um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed that. I laughed a lot, actually. Uh, so that was some of my takeaways. I was terrified by some of the violent parts. Luke thinks that all superhero movies are violent. I don't. I don't think that. I think this was pretty violent. And uh, like, I think it was funny and it was very touching too. I cried a lot. At a lot of parts with Barry's family. It was. Um, I was actually rooting for Barry to go change things because I could see why he did it. Um, I could see everything in his- I felt- I felt his heart and I felt like, yeah, you need to change stuff because you're all alone and you need to change this, so. Yeah, I felt- I felt very close to the character and I was very, um, it was very heart-wrenching, the movie, but, um, yeah. And then I thought, oh, it's gonna make it all better because maybe he'll meet, um, a really cool Batman that we met in an alternate universe. And maybe they'll be able to have another superhero movie together after this, but I don't think they're going to do that. So that also is heart wrenching that they won't continue yep. it. That's kind of getting into spoiler territory now, but. Well, sorry. That's okay. Wins. We're actually going to talk about the first arc of the movie now. So let me get my little time codes in. Uh, this was intro. This was our initial thoughts. So our thoughts. Um, now 17 minutes is talking about. Uh, first arc. All right. right. So versus the Flash is super OP. Though. All right. First arc. Uh, I'm gonna stay playing as. Actually, no. We're gonna go because this is all about Batman. So we're gonna go play as. I think I have um, Affleck's suit here. It's been a while. I'm surprised I never had a Keaton suit in this, but I think this is Affleck. Oh wait, no, that's not it. The Flash. Nope, not it. There we. Nope. Wait. Nope. There he is! That's his tactical thing. Cool. And there was a way for me to make sure that I don't destroy you with, uh... Was it match options? There we go. And then, uh, you need to... Whoops. You need to hit, uh, uh, square. And then you put on L1. There we go. Alright, cool. Now, everybody's all good to go, and I just wanted to punch Barry again, because I can. Uh, Batcave. Okay, so we're going to talk about the first arc of the movie. I like the first arc. The first arc is about Ben Affleck's Batman. Um, I really, really liked Ben's Batman in this. Like, Ben doesn't use the voice modulator that was in it before is gone. So he doesn't sound like Mr. Fluffy anymore. Which... I, I, I want to say that the the voice modulator thing was interesting, and it it feels like he didn't really have the voice modulator much in Justice League. Maybe he did. I don't know. At least in Whedon's cut, he did. But it, I feel like in um, uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League, I don't really remember a lot of voice modulator. I remember more of Ben's voice. So Ben is is just doing like kind of a, a darker tone to his voice. You know, kind of like a, um, a Kevin Conroy, there's there's like a growl to it that you know he means business. But another thing that I liked about it is his Batman doesn't talk very much. Yeah. So uh, Alfred and ends up calling uh, Barry to assist with Batman. And uh, Barry is like, you know, why am I always cleaning up bat messes? Because he feels like he's the janitor of the Justice League. Mm -hmm. You know, because he's, he's still technically kind of in training. He's a, he's a fledgling hero. They don't tell you how long Barry has been 
established as uh, the Flash, like in this universe. We don't know. It could go 2017 to 2023, and they just kind of pick up right there, or they, they don't, you know, they don't really get very consistent with that. We don't know. Um, what we do know is that Batman had a run-in with the Falcones, namely Alberto Falcone, I believe, and he stole this uh, chemical warfare weapon from... They're not really clear, but Batman is up during the day, much to the chagrin of Barry, because Barry has to get to work. Barry works as a forensic scientist at, uh, I think it's Central PD, something like yeah. that. Yeah. So, uh, Alfred uh, contacts them and he's kind of like, oh, you know, I'm I, I really busy right now, Alfred. Do I really need to do this? And he's going through the different Justice Leaguers. He calls them out by name and Alfred says, uh, played by Jeremy Irons, he's like, they're all busy, sir. It's like, you know... He needs you, and Barry's just trying to do everything he can to get out of bat duty this morning. Because he's really upset that Batman is awake during the day, because he's like, I thought bats are nocturnal or whatever. And then uh, Batman cuts Alfred off, like, uh, right after Alfred, you know, they said, hey, where's Superman? And you see, which, this was kind of disgraceful, I didn't like this. I like what the original rumor was, where Henry Cavill had a, a voice cameo, where yeah. Alfred calls him up on the phone and he says, I would love to help out, but I'm kind of busy dealing with this volcano. Yeah. So what you do is you don't see that. Um, Flash looks over at the TV and he sees Henry Cavill's Superman from behind dealing with a, a volcano all heroically. Yeah. And uh, is like, oh, okay, well, Superman's busy, so I, I can't do this. Yeah, so we really didn't get a nice uh, send-off for Henry Cavill for probably his last role probably is his last role as superman like Which is it's a shame it is a shame it is a shame so then uh before like uh barry can continue to like grill alfred for more justice leaguers to help like wonder woman and aquaman and stuff like that batman comes onto the line and he's just very imposing he's like barry now and flash is like okay okay and this is a guy literally who has like insane superpowers but batman is the leader of the league so it's like if the boss tells you to move you move so then uh, he says, look, I need to go after this guy because he stole this chemical warfare and it could be the end of Gotham City. Meanwhile, there was some seismic disturbances over at Gotham General. Uh, I believe it's Gotham General, or he says Elliot General. I don't remember. It's one of the uh, hospitals there. Mm -hmm. And uh, he tells Flash to go over there and deal with that. And uh, while Flash is there, then we get a weird opening sequence of him... Um, Saving babies, which is the weirdest thing ever that they did with that. It was uh, hilarious. It was hilarious. It, it was definitely like that's how you knew it was not a Batman movie because the director did such a great job with Ben's limited time in the movie that you felt like you were watching the opening of a, a really cool Batman movie. And this this is from a guy who's seen a lot of Batman movies, so I was kind of like, wow, that's uh, that's pretty impressive. And uh, coincidentally, the director of The Flash is now the director of Batman Brave and the Bold. Which, mm. yes, um, I'm, I'm down for that. It's going to be a live action Brave and the Bold? Or no? B Batman Brave and the Bold is the working is the title of the movie, and it's going to be about Batman and Damien. So it's going to oh. be a new Batman and Damien, and Andy Muschietti, I believe is his name, the guy who did The Flash movie, yeah. is the guy who James Gunn has selected to do the... Um, the Batman movie. Mm. The movie was kind of like you thought it was a Batman movie at first, and then you and then it cuts to uh, Barry, and you realize, oh wait, this is a Flash movie. Yep. And uh, Ben Affleck has a new Batman theme that, as you kids say, slaps. It is really good. It's like a combination of his um, BVS theme mm. and uh, his Zack Snyder Justice League theme, and it, it's very brief. It's only in the movie for like probably two or three minutes, and then they kind of like merge it with the Flash theme, but. It was really well done. I really enjoyed it. So, um, Batman is on this motorcycle, basically dealing with um, trying to go after the Falcones. And uh, while that's happening, Flash is saving all these babies at the hospital in a very comedic way that um, it chewed up a bunch of time. Like, I think that whole, like, slow-mo sequence lasted, like, maybe... Uh, four minutes. It, it kind of dragged on a little bit. It was like uh, people used to make fun of um, Zack Snyder for including right slow mo, thing. and here you had like a, an entire opening that was like four moment, four minutes in slow motion, with Flash uh, saving these babies. Yeah, I mean they probably. I mean I don't know. I don't really. 
I don't. I guess we're not in the spoiler section. No, yeah, we're, we're we're talking about the first part of the movie. Yeah, but I I mean yeah, they could have probably done that faster, but it was still funny. I laughed a lot during that. Oh, I laughed. Yeah. It was funny. So uh, while Flash is doing that, Batman is chasing after uh, Falcone in a really cool like a uh, motorcycle motorcycle chase sequence that I would put um, better than Bale's Bat Cycle. Like I I was thinking about when I was watching this, like, how are they going to outdo the Batbike from The Dark Knight? Because that was actually kind of a cool chase sequence. And they did it. Uh, I don't know why he's using the Bat Cycle, though, because a lot of time has passed and he probably repaired the Batmobile. But yeah. maybe they were like, you know what? We already did a Batmobile chase sequence at BVS, so we're going to put Ben on the bike. And I'm glad they did, because you get to see all the cool things his bike could do. It was a throwback to the 89. Um, Batmobile chase, like he used a back grapple to turn. Uh, he did a bunch of cool stuff with the Bat Cycle. He has a bulletproof shield. He's got gadgets built into it. It was, I was, I was amazed. I was like, wow, this is awesome. Yeah. And all the while they would, you know, switch to the Batman section, which was very action packed, and then they would go back to the Flash stuff. But um, the Batman stuff actually got kind of funny too. So eventually, Batman finally catches up. Uh, like on, I think it was like the Solomon Wayne Memorial Bridge. Finally catches up to Falcone and people and back grapples his way onto a moving vehicle like something out of Arkham. And then he's uh, fighting off the, um, uh, not the mercenaries, the, the mob people in, in the, uh, armored transport where the virus is. Yeah. And, uh, he gets to the last guy after doing all this, like, cool Arkham stuff. And this, this whole scene only lasts, like, for maybe less than a minute. It, it goes by so quick. Mm -hmm. Um, but the, the, the driver, um, Batman just looks at him funny, and the oh, driver, yeah, that was funny. the driver realizes, you know what? I'm gonna get beat up by Batman, so I'm just gonna jump out of this moving vehicle because it's probably gonna hurt less. Mm -hmm. And that's what he does. He literally like falls out of the moving vehicle, and then Batman realizes, wait a second, I made a terrible mistake. And then the entire thing goes careening uh, off the, um, you know, off the Gotham uh, Bridge. And Batman gets saved by a Justice Leaguer, which we'll talk about later. Um, but it was a, a great sequence that happened and uh, got some claps in the audience. People are like, oh my gosh, I didn't know uh, that Justice Leaguer was going to be in the movie. But, I mean, I knew, but other yeah, people didn't. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yep. Yep. So Batman gets saved uh, by a Justice Leaguer. And then, basically, uh, it skips to a sequence where Barry finally gets a sandwich made. That was happening at the beginning of the movie. And he, he goes to work. He gets chewed yes. out by his boss because, of course, nobody knows he's the Flash. And he's right. he's going over uh, some cases. And one of those cases is his dad's, like, appeal process that's coming up to try to, you know, say, hey, I've been sticking to this 20, 30-year thing that I didn't kill my wife uh, because right. the security footage can clearly see me. That's me. That's my alibi. And Barry is stumped, like, because... Uh, his dad has made it kind of hard for it to prove that it's really him grabbing the uh, tomatoes. Right. So he's having kind of a rough night, and uh, he needs to talk to a friend, and uh, he ends up calling Batman, and they they meet up, and uh, they're having a talk, and Barry brings up, you know, what if it was possible to save, you know, my parents from time travel or your parents? And I love what Ben says, both in the trailer and the clips that have released. He says, you know, we're not supposed to go back and fix our mistakes because our scars are what make us who we are. And, you know, Flash is trying to be like, well, you know, if we do this, um, you know, we could, you know, fix everything. And then Batman reminds him, well, if you do this, you could literally destroy everything. It's like kind of like a butterfly effect. If you step on a blade of grass wrong... You know, it could rate, create, like, branch timelines and all this other stuff. So, it was really cool to see... I know Batman's supposed to be very smart in the uh, Zack Snyder universe, but the way that they handled him, like Andy, which is, you know, a different director than Zack, it still felt like we were watching Zack Snyder's Batman. Yeah, it, it did feel like that. Yeah, it, it wasn't like a, a tonal change. Yeah, it definitely felt like the Zack Snyder universe. Yeah, it felt like maybe the Zack Snyder universe got a little less grim 
you know? But it still felt like these characters were the same characters that we met uh, over the course of um, the, the, the yeah, time that the DC Universe existed. Seeing uh, Ezra Miller's Flash and uh, ben, Aff ben Affleck's Batman talk, um, it really felt like they were friends and like they were both kind of loners and like, you know, that really was, I think they're both good at portraying like two people that, you know, like they are pretty much lonely and mm -hmm. um, they definitely feel like they are, they don't just work together, like they're good friends. Yeah. Which is neat. And then I also thought I remember a line, I'll have to watch it again, but I thought that he said to him at that moment where he said, well, I'm, you know, broken, I can fix everything that's broken. And I think Ben Affleck said to him, I thought I remember him saying, well, I don't know, I thought he said something like, you're not, there's nothing broken with you. Yeah, that's what he said. And I remember thinking, like, wow, that's such a nice thing for him to say, like, you know, because there's nothing wrong with Barry, it's just something bad happened to him. I also like how, like, Barry was, like, because he was reaching out, you know. They, they were kind of celebrating not having the world get destroyed from this virus because that was a very real threat. It was a very nasty... It could have been, like, a um, a connection to, like, the con Contagion Legacy virus that Race had that uh, if it goes in the water, it would basically wipe out, like, an entire city. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, it, you know, it's harmless unless it gets uh, touched by water. Right. Um, so they were kind of just having a beer, hanging out, um, which was weird to see Batman do that. But Barry asked him, like, if he wanted to hang out more. And the what I liked about the scene is talking about the possibility of bringing his parents back. You could tell that it was kind of bothering Bruce. And so when Barry invites him out to, you know, kind of have a guy's night and just kind of, like, chill, um, he's just very solemn and kind of, like... You know, uh, maybe another night, Barry. Tonight's not going to work for me because, you know, just talking about his parents was uh, a bit too much for Bruce. And I, I liked seeing a little bit of the human element from Ben because we never really got that. As much as I got with Keaton as a kid who would always break character and add that, like, realism, like, oh, you know, this is a problem. Um, ben never showed uh, in the cowl, like, that type of humanity. Um, that made Batman, like, more than just, like, this imposing godlike figure, this god killer, basically, yeah. to just this kind of human character. So we actually got to see the human element of Ben Affleck's Batman, which was awesome, you know? Yeah, definitely. And then, uh, as the first arc ends up closing up, basically, Iris and, uh, Iris and Barry end up meeting up. I forget why the reason is, uh, but they kind of have, like, a, a date in his apartment. And um, they show us, like, some Flash abilities that aren't really spoilers, but I think they're just kind of cool to talk about. Is um, Flash is a, a very established superhero in this, so he can do all the stuff that Flash can do. He can phase through walls, he can... Uh, time travel, he can mm -hmm. do his lightning punch, he can do his cyclone ability, uh, yeah. he can travel around the world and do his, like, really big, um, seismic, like, black hole punch. Yeah, he's able to do, so, yeah, they did show the phasing thing and other things like that a lot, just him casually using his powers all the time for everyday things, um, and in a funny way, and I think it kind of reminded me of, like, Lois and Clark with Superman, where he was always using his Superman power for funny things for day-to-day -day things like Lois would be like I want some Chinese food and Clark would just go and get her but it's kind of like the same idea like with Barry it's like oh can you get me this and it's like oh sure phases through wall mm -hmm. and then they have no idea they thought you got it from somewhere else so it was like yeah so it made it uh, a lot of inside jokes for the person watching it like oh wow these people have no idea how Barry did that but it's because he's the Flash um, no one has any... It's like Let's you, the audience, have all these inside jokes with Barry. Because, like, nobody has any that. idea how he's able to do that. And I like all... Just humor. I was, like, laughing the whole time. Like, so much humor and just smiling a lot. I really... It's like, this is one of my favorite DC films. Yeah, that's why I said it's in, in my tier list. It's that number five. I think my Wait. first uh, DC movie, if I'm really thinking about this, it would go... Zack Snyder's Justice League would be number one. Yeah. Number two would probably be BVS. Number three would be Wonder Woman. Um, number four would probably be Aquaman. 
And then number five would... Actually, no. Number four would be Flash. Number five would be Aquaman. And then Man of Steel would be number six for me. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have a tier list, but I this is, I did leave the theater thinking, oh my gosh. Like, I wish they would have some more Flash movies because this was amazing. Like, this was unbelievable. So, um, basically, as we uh, the close the uh, the first arc, pretty much um, they're having a date, uh, Iris and, and Barry. And Barry is out of beer um, because, you know, he has a high metabolism, which I, I like that. I liked how in the, even in the first arc, they established that if he's not eating, then he kind of runs out of power. And Batman has programmed this nice little, like, kind of widget in his suit. It was kind of funny, kind of comedic, that when he's running low on food intake, like, his powers start to decrease a little bit. Mm -hmm. But even though they introduced this at the beginning of the movie, I feel like they kind of forget about that MacGuffin that they added. Because mm -hmm. I don't really remember that being a, a thing, like, especially in the third arc. When they're doing all this crazy yeah. stuff, they never had the chance to eat again. So you oh, never right. you never see that thing on Barry's suit after um, the the first arc. Maybe maybe he had it tons of stuff in, I, kept for, in his suit. I, I the... think the director just forgot. <laughs> I, I think that's a continuity thing. Yeah. Um, especially all the crazy stuff they end up doing during the final battle. It's like that none of that stuff even mattered anymore. Maybe he ate tons of stuff before the final battle. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> he ate, he ate Keaton that. out of house and home. <laughs> um, so. On their awkward little date, um, Iris starts talking about, like, it, I suppose it would be interesting if you could time travel because, you know, she doesn't know he's the Flash, obviously, but it's Iris, which uh, people kind of forget, but it's Iris is the one that gives him the idea, like, even more so, because before he was just kind of casually talking to Bruce and his boss says, this would be a terrible idea because you could destroy everything. And she comes at it from a different angle, like, you know, well, if you could end up doing this, I suppose it would be possible. And then he starts theorizing in his head, like, well, I don't want to do anything that's going to disrupt a blade of grass, but what if I mess with time in a way that doesn't necessarily affect people, but the things that I do sets up a chain of events very small that could end up making my life better. And he comes up with this idea to go and mess with the tomato can. Which is not really him indirectly, or not him directly changing the events. It's the tomato can uh, it's doing indirectly that indirectly. It. And it, I feel like the 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 movie was pretty clever in how it dealt with time travel because I had never thought of this concept before. Yeah, like that you could actually make it so. Oh, well, if I like say say I had a day where I had something bad happen to me in my car because I needed to go get gas and something terrible happened in the gas station. Well, if you went back in time and made sure I had lots of gas, I would never have to go out for gas that day. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, exactly. Yep. Um, yep, thanks for the super chat. Appreciate that. We can read some of those at the end. Are we getting a boat? Oh, wait. I don't uh, know if that's a no, super chat. There's, oh, there's no boat. Thanks, everyone, for the thoughts and prayers for my ortho appointment for my shoulder. I won't have surgery. I won't have to have surgery for it. Okay, thank you. Awesome. Thank you so Very much. Very cool. You're grinding gears, so yeah, Iris is basically the one that has um, Barry fueled on this idea that he can go, even though Batman says, don't mess with time travel, I, it will be bad. He's thinking, well, what harm could just one tomato can be for uh, the health and wellness of the entire, uh, you know, DC universe. Mm -hmm. And apparently that tomato can is pretty powerful because it sets off a chain of events that not only creates branch timelines, but also timelines that have intersecting points that, you know, certain things, almost kind of like canon events in the uh, Across the Spider-Verse movie, except tied slow. to a tomato can, which sounds silly. You know, it's a Flash movie, but yeah. it's actually pretty... Uh, terrifying what happens. Yeah, and I really thought it was interesting later on when they were talking about the idea of time travel and that there were, could be, you know, swirling and straight and intersecting points to time and that some of them intersect. So the intersecting points would be things that you couldn't really change no matter how much you tried 
you couldn't change those things. There were certain things in time that you could never change. I thought, wow, that's really fascinating to think about, that there'd be some things you could and some things you can't. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is going to conclude the first arc. So now we're going to talk about the second arc, which is the berries. So I am going to dress as a flash as well. Because there's I'm gonna have two, two berries. berries. Two berries. Makes sense, right? Two flashes. 40 minutes. <laughs> then Batman. Uh, so this was 20. I don't have any uh, special costumes, I don't think, for... No. For the Flash. I could try to find one. We talked a little bit about Iris. Was that the 35-minute mark? I think it was Iris West. Iris... Iris the Flash. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to be playing as Barry as well. And I actually have Wait. Snyder Cut Barry. And thank you again for the super chat, Alex. And I'm so ha happy to hear about that, about your surgery. And, of course, uh, um, we're, we're always uh, uh, thinking and praying for you. And I hope you so glad that you don't have to have surgery on that. Thank you so the much, uh, Alex. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, that kind of looks more like the suit that he was wearing in the movie. The no, it doesn't. Shiny. That's the uh, Snyder Cut. That's the the pieced together parts of Wayne Tech satellite oh, stuff. Oh, but it was more shiny. The suit he had on in the movie was shiny. Yeah, but it but wasn't. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't that. Like that. It wasn't the hobbled together suit. This is still Ezra suit, the first suit. Because, you know, they obviously they don't have new stuff to add to it. No way you make a better omelet. All right, the two berries. So we won't tell you how Barry ends up uh, in the past, but let's say he messes with the tomato can, and then somehow he ends up falling out of the Speed Force. And instead of going back to the present after, you know, uh, changing the tomato, or whatever, tomato can situation, mm -hmm. uh, he ends up in the year 2013. Uh, the only difference is the tomato can worked with its miraculous godlike powers, and brought his mother back to life. The murder never happened, and uh, Barry apparently has been living with his family since he was about 18 years old and then went to college. And that's when uh, our Barry ends up, uh, you know, still with his powers, uh, going to visit his parents, which, you know, he causes them to be a little weirded out because they say he looks older and they think that college is causing him a lot of stress. Things like that. He's even wearing a woman's shirt when he first appears in front of his mom, which was kind of weird. Yeah, because he had to grab clothes because he was in his uh, uh, flash costume. He was in his flash costume, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And then, uh, because the universe can't give poor Barry a break, he ends up uh, meeting his other self. And then he's like, oh gosh, I need to go deal with something outside. And they're like, what do you mean? It's like, never mind. And he ends up uh, attacking himself, but because he's worried about a time paradox happening, he puts a pair of, like, uh, either a shirt or some boxers over his head to try to hide his identity. Because, you know, oh, right. those whole, yeah. like, shows and things that say if you meet You're your... You're not supposed to meet yourself. If you meet yourself, then it could be catastrophic. Mm -hmm. And uh, Barry thought he could just kind of hang out in the past and uh, hang out with his parents before going back to the present. And uh, his uh, self just ran randomly came in. And what I found interesting about this, uh, the second arc is the fact that Barry uh, notices that his younger self is, is very obnoxious, which is what a lot of criticism people had with um, Ezra Miller's Flash and Justice League, uh, Suicide Squad, and oh, wow. even The Flash. Oh, so they kind of like were almost like addressing that, like yeah, he was making and like making fun of himself a little bit, like oh, they, oh, it looks like I am obnoxious. It it feels like they were kind of addressing that. Yeah, that's that's what I saw too. They were kind of like oh. I never thought of him as like, uh, obnoxious. Though. Oh, he's super obnoxious. He's... I really liked. I like everything about Barry in the Snyderverse. So, anyway, uh, they're having, like, this kind of heart-to-heart, -heart, uh, so to speak, and, you know, future Barry is very annoyed with younger Barry because he's had all this time with his family, and he's really not doing anything with his life, and uh, other Barry had it very hard. He had to do everything kind of like an orphan because his dad was in jail his whole life. Um, and uh, then he finds out, uh, oh, gosh, today's date is 
the date uh, that's super important. And, and he's like, what do you mean super important? The, the day I go out with Iris? And he's like, no, you idiot. It's the day you get your powers. So he has to formulate a pow uh, plan to get his younger self superpowers, which you have to see it to believe it. But basically what Andy Machete did is he found a way of incorporating what Ezra Miller's Flash would be like if he got superpowers, because we never got to see his origin. Right. But you got to see Barry 2's origin of right. how he got his super speed. And you got to see his personality when he first got his powers, and then, yeah, that was really interesting. I'm not, I'm not going to spoil that for you guys. You'll have to go into the movies to see it, but it's a charming sequence that lasts about 20 minutes or something. It was it's really a, fun. It, it takes up pretty much the majority of the second arc. And I would say yeah. the second arc ends when they meet Keaton, um, but... Uh, more or less, after Barry 2 gets powers, for some unknown reasons, Barry 1, or Barry Prime, or Barry Future, loses his abilities. And then he needs to try to teach his younger, uh, very, um, we'll say, impatient self how to use his powers. Mm -hmm. Which is also a, a funny sequence. Like, it makes you feel like, oh, okay, yeah, this is a Flash movie, that makes sense. Um, and the way that they went about that, one of my favorite scenes in the second arc is when Barry is powerless and he's trying to escape where they got the powers and he can't phase anymore and he literally, he runs into the wall and then it's like a moment from like, uh, the old Looney Tunes cartoons. Yeah. And then, uh, the audience gets to see actually how ridiculous Ezra Miller looks like when he's really running without the particle effects because <laughs> he tries to run. And his other self is like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm running slow. And it, it looks really stupid when he was running around. Like, actually running without his powers. That the actor tried to mimic that weird... Uh, not the speed skating from Zack Snyder's thing. Like, his run is a little bit better now. They, they but it still it, looks goofy. They make goofy. his run look dumb. It, it's still, his run still looks it's cartoony. It's supposed to be but funny. It, it's not as bad as it was. Like, I hated how he ran in um, uh, the Snyder Cut. It's and, supposed to be funny. And how he ran in um, the 2017 one. So I... I like that he runs a little bit better. It looks a little a, cooler. He has a dorky run. Yeah, he, is, he has a dorky run. Let's just say that. We'll say that. So, uh, basically, you know, he's having a rough day. He lost his powers. He's been trying to teach his buddy, his other self, how to use his abilities. And uh, they have, like, uh, kind of a heart-to-heart -heart and a realization, oh, things are, you know, going to be really different. And we're gonna have to find a way of, you know, teaching you how to time travel so you can go and fix this so I don't lose my powers. And then, yeah. like another canon event, the world just can't give Barry a break. And it turns out today is the day that uh, Zod is gonna show up because it's the year 2013 still. Oh, wow. So not only did Barry just have his power stripped away and his younger self, who's kind of an idiot, has his abilities, but now, of all times, Zod is here, mm -hmm. and it's just like the the poor Flash can't catch a break, and then he realizes, okay, well I have this great idea, and his younger self's like, what? He says, what if we got the band together now instead of later? Like I'm sure Batman and Aquaman and Superman and all these people are around right now. We can all team up and like totally kick Zod's butt. Mm -hmm. And the younger Barry's like, oh yeah, that would, I don't know what a Zod is, but that sounds like really cool. Mm -hmm. Which I just want to say, Andy, that was a missed opportunity to have Barry use um, Bart Allen's word crash. Because when you time travel, you created this new universe that had new slang. It would have been a nice throwback to like some other Flash characters. Oh, that would be cute. Instead, he uses the word beef. Which yeah. is kind of weird and creepy. It's so beef. It's yeah. yeah he says it's everything's so beef. He should have said just so crash. I think that would have been. Yeah, that that would have been cuter, especially if it's already a flash term. It's a flash term from Bart Allen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been better and would have been less creepy, considering some of the allegations against uh, you know Ezra, involving younger people. Um. Anyway. So, you know, they think about, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna put the band back together and we're gonna, you know, beat Zod. 
And uh, lo and behold, we find out, oh, wait, no, that's not working out because Barry and his infinite wisdom falling out of the speed force has somehow, which doesn't make any sense, created a universe where no metahumans exist. And I feel here this is where the director made a mistake because he says no metahumans exist except for the Flash who was able to recreate the experiment yeah. that made him. How would that be possible if there were no metahumans or abilities to well, become metahumans? I mean... See? But maybe there weren't any metahumans until like, Barry recreated his experiment. Maybe he was the only one. No, because the Superman character was already still there, already on the Earth. It just wasn't around, you know? Mm. So, but the other metahumans don't exist, which is really weird. No, Superman was in the other universe. No, I'm saying a Superman existed on the Earth Barry was on. Oh, right. You're yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. See? See? This is this is why I always get on DC But he's for... not a metahuman. R well, no, he's an alien. Right. Yeah. So, I think he was just making a general statement. Like, okay, he was... oh, it's like there are no superhumans here at all. But in reality, there were, but there were none around. Right. Right, so... I think he was saying there's basically none. <laughs> um, what, what I find weird, though, is when oh, he's me. hanging out in Barry's Looking house or apartment or whatever, shared dwelling, down. whatever they call it. I don't know. Um, I felt like that sequence lasted a bit too long. It was like, yeah, it's kind of... It was super weird. It was, it was weird. But, um, you know, since they... He, Barry's panicking and he can't find any more of the Justice League because... And I, I won't spoil some of the, the things. He, he calls some of the Justice League members. We'll say that. And uh, you guys have to go to the theater to experience that for yourself. It's funny. Um, but in a panic state, you know, he uh, finds out that Batman does exist in this universe. Um, which he doesn't realize, which I don't understand how this happened, but... Um, Barry Allen somehow ended up, the other Barry Allen, where Nor Allen is alive, ended up being the 1989 Batman Returns universe. Mm -hmm. Which is weird, considering they've already erased that from existence in the Crisis on Infinite Earths on the CW. They had the, the actor who played Alexander Knox um, from the 89 Batman movie be on the Earth that was being erased. Uh, yeah, but... From the the prices on Infinite Earth, like paradox. Yeah, but there could be multiple universes that have a similar Batman to Batman 1989. Oh wow, I didn't even think about that. That's how multiverses work. Like you could have a you could have a parallel universe. Like if I went back in time a day right now and I moved one toothpick one inch and I came back, we could create a parallel universe where you know everything is exactly the same, but one of the boxes here is orange instead of blue and everything else in the universe is exactly the same mm. so you could have a parallel universe in which keaton is still there and it's another universe with keaton like there's multiple like, like according to the multiverse theories there would be mul there could be millions of uh universes with keaton in them and one of those universes has barry in it as well oh okay well all right and that, some of them don't sense. have barry in them and some of them don't have Barry. Okay. Yeah, yeah so it's sense. like... It, yeah, it would be like... I mean, it's just... It's basically like people who talk about multiverse theory. It's like, they're like, oh, yeah, I think my... <laughs> it's just so stupid. It's basically like people think... I've heard people say like, oh, yeah, I think my, my husband is an alternate Earth version because he's exactly the same... Except for he doesn't like mustard in this thing. I already pressed rematch a long time ago, and then I was waiting for you. That's weird. It actually, I pressed it, and it didn't even oh, do it. Weird. That you was weird. Um, yeah. So, yeah. You're uh, here vamping me because I'm just wondering. Yeah, yeah. Eventually, they, um, through some kind of weird shenanigans, they end up going to Gotham from Central City, which I, I don't know how far apart the the un like the the towns and stuff are because it literally says central city cab that ends up going to gotham and I, I know that they made the mistake of having metropolis and gotham be sister cities so where the heck is central city supposed to be you know it, it has to obviously be either in the same state or some they did something weird again because if you look again the cab on 
the thing where the berries pop out of in Gotham. It says Central City. That would have to be a heck of a cab fare, or the cities are just so close together, which I think would be stupid, personally. Because Barry is supposed to be over, like, uh, near Seattle or something, and Green Lantern is supposed to be in California. And then Green Arrow is supposed to be in... Well, maybe uh, they took free liberties, or maybe on this alternate Earth, the uh, cities are closer together. Maybe the cities are closer Maybe together. the map has changed. Like, imagine uh, Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are, like, al alternate versions of the same map. Some of the places have changed on that. When you play that game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, continue, sorry. I do feel like that the trailers, which I hope that DC learns from this, is... When you make your trailers, make sure that the trailers focus on just the first arc of the movie. Because there was already a lot of action in the first arc. Like, the Ben Affleck stuff was incredible. The Flash stuff was really cool. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like the trailers for the movie are a reflection of mostly everything that happens in the second and the third arc. Like, they kept a lot of the first arc as, like, not for prying eyes. And they, they put all the spoiler stuff in the um, in in the actual uh, trailers. Oh, I didn't even watch the trailers. Sorry about that. Yeah, like, uh, they show the Zod fight. They show the Barry stuff. They show the power scene. They show tons of Supergirl. They show Keaton not wanting to be a part of their little group. Okay. All that stuff was in the trailers, which is, you know, kind of crazy. So speaking of Keaton, we're going to bring Batman back into this. You can play as Batman if you want, and I can keep playing as the Flash. It's up to you. And uh, this is going to be the Keaton section. Keaton. So we're at the 56-minute mark. Uh, Keaton. Okay. And this is still part of the second arc, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So just have... you just have you just have one Batman skin. That's fine. Batman. Uh, what skins do I have for Barry? Oh no, that's not. Oh, Actually, I do remember I that. Actually, I see if I have. You might have. You might have. Well, I square? don't have any other. I know how to press square. Okay. I don't have the any flash. other loadouts. I'd have to go to the settings and and make mm, a yeah, loadout. Yeah, we done. You're good. His suit Batman. still looks pretty good. Uh, let's see. Go to. They don't have Wayne Manor in this, do they? No, they don't. Uh, back to the back cave then. It's a change starting area. That works. Fighters, Fighters approaching, approaching the, the Batcave. Cave. Okay, Keaton. Um, I liked Keaton in this movie. I really did. I liked his Bruce Wayne. Um, as a big fan of the Sorry, Batman like, Returns and Batman 89, uh, Bruce Wayne character, Super I felt like Keaton didn't mi miss a beat. He didn't have Alfred anymore, like, to, mm -hmm. um, bounce, like, uh, dialogue off, but he had the flashes and... Yep, and uh, oh, his Alfred was mentioned, though. His Alfred was mentioned. In fact, uh, I... Many people miss this Easter egg, but the pen that's in the Batcave is actually a uh, pen that uh, Alfred used to use from the older movies. Uh, that's his. That's the silver pen that Alfred had. Oh wow, Luke! Yeah. So it was a it was a nice throwback to yeah. the uh, the Alfred from those um, you know Batman movies, yeah. Batman through Batman and Robin. And I don't want to spoil any of the fun lines, but there was a lot of fun Keaton lines from older movies that were thrown in. Yep. So that was a lot of fun. So what we find is uh, the berries are actually exploring the original Wayne Manor from 1989, not Batman Returns. This is the Wayne Manor that has been re created uh, internally because, it, you know, the outside obviously is somebody's house in London, I think, or, or United Kingdom, I don't remember. Mm. Um, but the inside, they recreated the scene where Vicky Vale and Alexander Knox are talking about, this guy must have been the king of the wicker people. Um, <laughs> they're, you know, they're in yeah, Batman's trophy room. It was really cool, a lot of medieval stuff, and yeah, it was really awesome, looking very gothic in there. It looked like you were going back in time. Um, it definitely looked like you were in Batman in 1989, the film. It's like you walked from one movie into another movie. They did, because also the cinematography felt like a Burton film when Keaton was on screen again. Like, the, it, it was fantastic. It was like, okay, we started with Ben Affleck and Flash's universe. And then once we get to Gotham, Gotham goes back to almost like the aesthetic that it had uh, in Keaton's time. Which is was pretty incredible to see, like that, 
um, classic gothic feel mixed together with the, you know, the modern DC movies. Oh, that was awesome. I love that. So pretty much uh, the entire Wayne Manor, just about every room that you saw in Keaton's Batman movies outside of the Batman Returns stuff is in this movie. Like the the table where he and Vicky oh, um, yeah. ate, the long table, yep. that was in there. Uh, the living room area was in there. Uh, the kitchen, where they ate the, um, whatever snack and Alfred was hanging out with them. Uh, the wooden kitchen area. Alfred, uh, I don't remember. That was the servant's kitchen, or whatever, I think is what Alfred called it. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. But, um, that was there. The long staircase where Vicky and Bruce go upstairs. You see that in the background. Um... They did a great job of recreating Burton's 1989 uh, Wayne Manor. Yeah. And uh, pretty much, like, uh, after they get jumped by Keaton, which is a, a fantastic sequence to, to see. It, I think the reason why Keaton had long hair there is because that was a stunt double. Obviously, because Keaton couldn't do all that stuff. Um, oh... I thought it. I thought they had. Um, I thought he had long hair because it was trying to imply that he. Oh yeah, no, just, he was super old. But like that he was old and he didn't care anymore. He was a recluse. Like when you stay inside all the time, you kind of grow your hair. Out. Yeah, I, I can speak from uh, <sighs> that. My my hair does grow pretty long. Uh, from well, that I mean, kind of you stuff. You don't have a reason to cut your hair when you never go outside. That's true. Like I think that's what they were trying to imply that he never leaves the house. <laughs> yeah, he probably hadn't left the house for years. Um, but uh, also, I mean, we never really see his face except for some close-ups when he has his really long oh, hair. Right. Yeah, because he's sense. he's doing some pretty incredible stunts in his kitchen fighting the two berries. Yeah, it was awesome. It was. Um, what I like after that is when uh, Keaton realizes that wait a second, the, these these people somehow know me. He asks them, hey, do you guys want to uh, have something to eat? You yeah. Know? And he just, like, he completely shifts character from, like, killer vi vigilante man to, like, huh, you want you want some spaghetti? Yeah, there's Keaton for you. And I, I saw some people's reviews. They were making fun of Keaton for that, and it's like... That's he, what that's Keaton, what Keaton, Keaton was like. like! That's why we loved him. Yeah, that's what Keaton was because like in his Batman movies. Because he's a human being. That's what made him so great as Batman. Mm -hmm. Is that he goes from... He can do all of these things and fight crime... But when he's home, he's a, a person. Yeah. He's a person when he's home. He has his own personality. He's a, He just is like an introvert that just wants to be left alone and hang out and be peaceful. Doesn't want to fight. He has to fight crime because he, he's like tortured inside. He's trying to get rid of the torture inside from his parents' death. Yep. But he doesn't want to be like that all the time. Yep. He has to have sometimes when he's a regular person. In fact, Keaton just had a uh, interview recently. Um, he was doing a podcast, and he says everybody like always talks about how Batman is is the guy. And he says, but what people don't understand is that Bruce Wayne is the tortured guy that puts on the suit. Right. And he says the reason why I uh, I walked away from um, the the third movie is I I just couldn't uh, get. That idea through the skull of the director, and right. he says, and I don't, I don't want to talk ill of the dead, but I, uh, I told him that you know you don't know who Batman is because Bruce Wayne, he is, he's Batman, and you know they're one and the same. Uh, right. He's got a lot of trauma. Right. And uh, he wanted to, he wanted to to focus on you know Batman can do all this stuff. And he wanted to lighten up the movie, and, and Keaton was just like, at that point, he says, I tried. You know, I, I tried to be civil with them for many months. And he says he just wouldn't budge. And he said, you know what? I'm done. Because he says, yeah. if you don't understand the core aspect of what makes Bruce Wayne who he is, we're done talking here. And he just walked off yeah. set. He has to do all that because of his, you know, his trauma and everything. He doesn't want to be like that. Yep, so the important things that he told Andy when he was, you know, considering coming back to the role, because they approached both Bale and Keaton. Like, they were going to have Bale be the, the Batman that they, you know, ended up yeah. uh, meeting and stuff like that. But Keaton would have more significance because, well, I mean, it's been 30 years. 
you know? That would have been, like, a, a huge draw. It should have been a huge draw, if not for Ezra. Um, but anyway, yeah. like, he had a couple conditions to, to reprise his role. One, the script had to be good, which the script was. He liked what they were doing with his Batman. It was like they never missed a beat of what his character was. And plus, he got to improvise, which was another plus. Um, number two, uh, he needed to be able to move his neck. Uh, he didn't like, uh, the, the suits were too claustrophobic that he did for the two movies. Mm -hmm. So, when he was on the Robotech set, or Robocop one, uh, the lead actor in that movie was complaining about the, you know, the, the Robocop suit. But the Robocop suit had, like, a air conditioning unit in it to cool it off. And right. Keaton said, well, in my day when we played superheroes, he says, I had to wear this rubber monkey suit, and I was sweating to death like a rat. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I hated it. And he says, you know, and here you got, you know, you're Mr. Entitled here with your uh, fancy, you know, uh, cooling suit. And right. You're, you're like saying a, you don't like it when literally, you know. You have so, an air conditioning almost unit in yeah. there. Yeah. So he said his new Batman suit had to be able to breathe. And if it had a way to cool it off, like, you know, air conditioning or whatever, that's what he wanted. So that's why the suit looks a little bulkier compared to, like, some of his 89 costumes. It's, yeah. It probably has a cooling system built in. Yeah, I mean, also, thank you, Galen, for the super chat, and we'll read it in a second. Um, I just wanted to say before I thought of it, like, anyone who's had a relative, like a uncle or grandfather or father who's been through, like, a war, you'll know that, like, they're, your, your family member can be very tough, but then when they're at home, you know, they're just going to make you spaghetti or be a kind person because you have a tough side that you have to be tough for, and then you have a side when you're at home. Yep. And that's exactly what Keaton is doing. Exactly, He played the character exactly right. Well, once he gets out of his murderous intent mode, he notices that, you know, that one kid with the long hair is just a kid. He's like, you know, right. maybe 17 or 18. And he's just kind of like, oh, you know, these people he, obviously know who I am. And He goes back to human mode. Yeah, yeah. Instead of Batman mode. And then, you know, we don't know how much time passed, but they, they hang out in the kitchen from uh, that we saw in Batman 89. With Vicky and Alfred. And, um, you know, he's like, uh, so this Zod guy, he's, he's bad. It's like, yeah. And they're like, okay. And he says, so you, you want me to find this Superman? And, you know, they're talking about all this stuff. And Barry's like, well, yeah, in my universe, uh, Batman is our leader. He's our strategist. And he's a brilliant detective. And, you know, he's, he's trying to butter up Keaton. And Keaton's just kind of, like, doing the nod thing. Like, yeah, I can, you know, I can kind of see that. And then he's like, um, I've never heard of this, like, Superman character. And Barry's like, well, you know, he, he's this and that. And he's like, well, you call yourself Batman. And Keaton, I'm sure this was an improvised line. He's like, I don't call myself Super Batman. And, you know. Yeah, right. That, right. Didn't, that didn't feel like a scripted thing. I felt uh, like... Uh, he's not saying he's super. He's just saying he's Batman. What they don't show you in the trailers, because they get the subtitles wrong, is when Barry asks Batman if he's going to help him, Batman says no. He says pass. Mm -hmm. And then it's up to the, the two idiots to try to, you know figure out what's going on uh, themselves. Yeah, that was really unexpected because it's like, oh, we wait, just I assumed it because it's a superhero movie, he'd be like, okay, let's go. Let's suit up, but yeah. But he's just like, okay, I'll pass on that. He's like, pass. He's like, pass? What do you mean, like, pass the pass the spaghetti or and then he just walks away yep but not before he gives one of the coolest words of wisdom ever when talking about time travel that was amazing the spaghetti uh thing yeah the fact that he actually not only ben affleck was able to understand time travel perfectly and then Keaton's Batman also understood uh, time travel, even maybe even better. I think Keaton's Batman understood it better, like. It's like he was able to like talk about it in a way that I'm just thinking like, wait, <laughs> did we have like uh, some kind of like uh, particle physicist on the on the show for like reference here? Because that was pretty. That was pretty interesting. interesting yeah, it was like wow. Um, <laughs> But basically, Keaton is the Batman that confirms the multiverse because he says, you know, when when you got these branching timelines, he says they don't just branch. They then intersect and they create their own thing. He says, then he pours the spaghetti on the plate and he dumps the tomato sauce over it. He says, what you get is a mess of a multiverse. 
Because he's right. like, bro. And just like that. <laughs> yeah, and Galen says, thank you for the super chat, Galen, a.k.a. W- Wig Rob. <laughs> Hi, Rob. The Flash movie, to me, felt like DC's version of Endgame, says Galen. Mm, maybe a little. Maybe. I mean, it did have a lot of converging things in it. Kind of. But I, I feel like an end game would have been great if it had more superheroes in it. Final Crisis would have been their end game. Yeah, I wish they had more. If they had had more, like if they had come back to the original or they showed the original timeline with like all those superheroes like Henry Cavill and everyone and, and uh, Cyborg and everybody, that would have been cool. But yeah, unfortunately, I don't know. I guess they just keep changing the actors that are playing everyone so it's so hard for them to have an end game but that's so cool that you um enjoyed it though um thanks for the super chat galen yeah we're gonna continue so uh basically keaton you know he walks off he doesn't want anything to do with them he doesn't even tell them to leave his house which i i thought he was gonna be like that grumpy old man like you know you ate get out but um he doesn't he doesn't say anything he just kind of stumbles off he was kind but he didn't want to help yeah he didn't want to he was like yeah i'm done with this so then they break they break into the back cave and we get this beautiful sequence uh with again the cinematography from um the uh 89 batman movie with an updated bat cave because remember the bat cave has changed significantly for just about every keaton movie as well as um like the schumacher films changed the bat cave very dramatically and made it very toyetic and stuff like that so what we got to see with the uh the bat cave that they explore which is you know kind of a cute sequence like it, it was a huge nostalgic trip for me too because the bat cave to me it looked like a mixture between the 89 bat cave and the bat cave from the animated series mm-hmm. which andy machete is actually a big fan of the animated series as well um, but he's also a, a super, super fan of, um, the 89 Batman. Like, when he was able to get Keaton to come back, it was like a dream come true for him. Like, more so than making the Flash movie, which, you know... Awesome. Every actor, every, just about every, um, like, director says that they're a huge Batman fan. Like, so, yeah. he has to be through the roof that his next project is actually a Batman movie. So we're really gonna... But Flash was his number two guy, and... He made a pretty good number two movie for the, you know, his number two favorite superhero. Yeah, and besides Adam West, um, that, I mean, Keaton was the first real on-screen Batman in a movie. Of course, Adam West was, you know, he played it more like a, like a funny, humorous thing. The first Batman in a movie was the serial guy from the 1940s, but oh. technically the first theatrical movie Batman is Adam West. Oh, wow. You had the first season of the TV show in 1966, and then that summer, if I'm not mistaken, was the Batman movie, The Batman, mm. um, which starred Adam West, Burt Ward, Cesar Romero, uh, Burgess Meredith, uh, not Julie Namor, I don't remember who she was, Lee Merriweather, I think, uh, Frank Gorson, and there was one other yeah, person. But, um, what I'm saying is Keaton is the first one who made Batman more serious, though, yes. and dark. Yeah, well, outside um, of Frank Miller's writings, yeah. You trying to read something? I don't. Uh... All right, thank you all for the super chat. Wait's phone. Um, J X said that Keaton's Batman was not comic accurate because Burton didn't read comics because of dyslexia um in reality like you said keaton batman was the murderous 30s bob kane batman case closed yeah all right thank you uh wade's phone really appreciate that thank you so much bob kane was a consultant on the 89 batman uh movie and he brought uh, keaton the golden age comics uh, and Keaton said he wasn't going to do those weird one-liners, which, if you remember, when Keaton kills people in the 89 movie, he doesn't do goofy one-liners. He kills people in creative ways, but he doesn't then go, like, a fitting end to your kind or something. He, he hardly speaks, which is what, you know, he felt made the character more mysterious. And I, I, I sense that um, Ben Affleck in this movie, you get to see the difference between Ben Affleck and Keaton in this movie. 
Ben Affleck hardly speaks, and Keaton speaks even less. <laughs> yes. Yep. And all these scenes of him doing all this stuff, like, you know, just looking around, glancing at things, calculating things, setting things up, getting the bat, everything calculated, and, and, and like, getting everyone on, like, a, you know, just doing everything, like, um, getting everyone on the Batmobile and running ahead and getting everyone in the car, like, doing all these things... And doing all these amazing things, and without speaking, yeah. like a lot of his acting is no speaking at all. He is uh, he's uh, Keaton's type of acting, especially for his Batman, was all uh, expression based, like body movements and uh, his mannerisms. Yes. You you could actually tell, which is amazing, that when you go back and you watch the '89 movie, you can tell the kind of stuff that Batman or Keaton was doing with his acting that you couldn't really see because, you know, his face was, like, shrouded by a mask and uh, all this other stuff. But his mannerisms, it, it's its very similar to, like, how Japan has, like, the Super Sentai and the Kamen Rider people. Like, they use their body to express their acting. Mm -hmm. And Keaton did the same thing with his Batman. So you could tell when he's menacing. You could tell when he's kind of nervous. You could tell when he was sneaking around. Mm -hmm. Like... You know, it all worked. Yeah, like if you didn't even speak English and you were watching it, you could you could watch the whole movie with knowing exactly what he was doing because it's all his mannerisms. Yep. So uh, more or less, Keaton decides after a while, like when they're done exploring the Batcave and we get to see the '89 Batmobile again, which is not used in this movie. It's it's on display. Um, we don't really get to see a lot of trophies because they cut that from the movie. Uh, they did cut some Keaton stuff, unfortunately, um, because before there was supposed to be Easter eggs for Catwoman's Whip. The only Easter egg that they kept in the movie was the Jack Nicholson, ah, 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 which was weird that he kept it inside the Batmobile. I know. You know, um, but I mean, I guess the 89 movie was his favorite or something. I don't know. But there was supposed to be more uh, throwbacks to his time as Batman. There was no Robin suit, so this Batman is based on the film Batman. So there's there's no like uh, mm -hmm. connection to the '89 comic book that came out like two years ago. He didn't yeah. have a Robin, um, so he's not the Schumacher uh, Batman. Right. Um, let's see what else did he do. The Batcave looks fantastic. They use Danny Elfman's music uh, for any time that Batman is suited up, which is amazing. Yeah, the music was awesome. They had the... And they did a better job with the Danny Elfman music <laughs> than when Danny Elfman himself came back to do the Justice League score of 2017. Yeah, that's true. They did. They they were able to arrange his theme and make it sound amazing. Mm-hmm. Um... I mean, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about the Bat Cave because I don't want to spoil anything, but, but well, there's some really cool reveals of some of the Bat devices in there. <laughs> well, in the trailer, they, they already show all the Bat Cave. Oh, oh, they shouldn't have shown it. They even show, like, Batman's arsenal of suits oh, to show that he's been active for, like, 30 they years. They shouldn't have shown that. I didn't see, see, I didn't see any of the trailers, so yeah. everything was like, oh my gosh. I was freaking out seeing the, the bad cave and them revealing each thing in it it was really cool we won't tell you how he um ends up joining up with the team but eventually they head to um we'll say they head somewhere because they find where superman may be mm -hmm. i'm not going to tell you the country because uh, that's kind of a spoiler um but they end up going into this military complex and uh, batman has to save the day and what i loved about um, again, seeing the human element of Batman, which we're not, you guys, your generation, not our generation, your generation is not used to Batman having doubts or being like talking to himself, giving, giving, so yeah. he's, he's standing above like all these soldiers that have like their, uh, um, rifles on the flashes yeah. and he tells himself, this is going to hurt. And then he, he dives, yeah. he dives down and he takes out all the guards I, I that was wondering what he was saying. He was saying it was going to hurt himself, right? Yeah, because he was going to get shot. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought he was saying. Yeah. I didn't know. I thought he was saying it was going to hurt them, but then I thought, wait a second. No. No, it's, when he's he said, it's going to hurt him. When he him. said it's going to hurt a he's lot. Telling he's telling himself. He's telling himself, prepare for this because, and he's because, also. 
Yeah, Keaton plays the character as what you would feel if you were Batman. Mm -hmm. You literally feel like you could be Batman because everything he does is so relatable. No other Batman actor, like Bale never did that. Bale, Bale didn't add any, any human aspect to it. And I think, I'm just gonna say this, I maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like it works kind of well because I think Ezra Miller's character is really relatable too as the Flash. Yeah. So this was a really interesting team up. It yeah. worked like Batman, Ben Affleck's Batman is like the boss of the Justice League. So like Barry and Batman working together at the beginning of the movie felt like uh, a boss and an employee working together. Like, you know, Barry obviously has like holds Bruce in kind of like a mentor uh, thing and they're friends, but like they're you know, he's Bruce is definitely the leader of that of that group. Whereas in Michael Keaton's world, Michael Keaton is like kind of a guy that is not really used to working with people, which you can tell. Mm -hmm. um, I I especially love before they they actually get inside the base. Uh, one one little Keaton Easter egg, I will I will share with you guys that I absolutely love that many people probably didn't catch, but it's totally something Keaton would have done. Uh, they land at the base, and, um, Keaton, like, drops one of the flashes down after, you know, like, grappling up. And then before Barry can ask him what we do next, like, Keaton just walks off. Like, he doesn't... <laughs> yeah, he doesn't, yeah. He doesn't wait for the other... the Barry. He just, like, yeah. he just leaves and then they say to each other like where where is he going it's like follow his footsteps yeah just follow his footsteps because he disappeared he just he doesn't have any reason to commun like he doesn't communicate with anyone which i love because that's that's how i want that i don't i don't communicate well with people and yeah my you know my husband usually is walking ahead of me and because he has add and he just walks ahead oh i'm going to the movies See ya. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I completely I'm I'm surrounded by people that are like me and are like Keaton, like are loners. So I completely get that. You know, he doesn't have time to talk to people. It's just oh, you should already know where we're going, basically. <laughs> It'll hurt just the same. I think that's how people like that think. Like oh well, why should I explain that we're going this way? Just why should I even need to say the words "follow me"? It should be exactly. obvious. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it should be obvious who you're following. You asked me for help. I would assume you'd be following me. Yep. So um, uh, in inside, uh, I was my 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 jaw very rarely drops in the movies. Like when I go to the movies and I see superhero movies, it's like okay, this has been done. Um, I will say that Keaton's warehouse scene, not as good as Affleck's, because that was, like, sheer brutality. But for a 70-year-old Batman, Keaton kicks a lot of butt. Like, he saves everybody in that one fight. Yeah, and it's funny because the other two people have superpowers, and he doesn't, but yet he's doing everything, really. Yep, it was basically like, you guys know when you play Arkham, and you're kind of observing from, like, a, a vantage point, and then you go down and you, you clean house? So, I mean, he did Batarang takedowns, he did a grapple shot with his um, back grapple into, like, a, a, a snapping kick. He did, he threw a batarang from behind him and hit a guy. He did the Keaton signature spinning back punch. Like, or, or, the, like, when a guy walks up behind you and he just did, like, the classic, like, Keaton back punch thing. Mm -hmm. Where he didn't look at the guy. Um, he did grapples. He did smoke bombs. Uh, yeah, it was his like. His cape was awesome. I, his cape is bulletproof and glides. It was like. As, as a Keaton fan of the character, the 89 thing, it's, it brought a tear to my eye. It makes you think, like, Keaton Batman was the best Batman because he's just so amazing. Like, his suit is unbelievable. His cape, just like how he looks, he looks like some kind of creature of the night. Because it it's all black, it yeah. Just look like his whole look is like this gothic look. Is like, oh my gosh. Well, you have to remember too. The reason why they made '89 Batman look this cool is because he was supposed to be the Batman going forward. Like in Walter Hamada's universe, Keaton was supposed to be Batman for at least five years. Five years of films was Keaton was going to pop up in everybody oh. else's thing. So they, in fact, he Walter. Looked, yeah. So why didn't they do that? Because James Gunn and Peter Safran changed everything. But oh my God. 
Oh, um, oh my god. Walter Hamada said they needed a warehouse scene. So yeah. the sequence where Keaton is fighting people, like the military people, that was always supposed to happen. But it did get reshoots. But that sequence where he's beating everybody out, up and it's like a jaw-dropping moment, right. that was always supposed to be the plan because this was the Batman that was supposed to move forward after the reset. That's wow. why he appeared in Batgirl. That's why he in appeared in Aquaman. And that's why he was going to be kind of like the not retired Nick Fury guy that didn't see action, yeah. but he was going to be a Batman and more of like a... Um, I wish they would have released this film much earlier. I mean, it was supposed to come out in, uh, and during then, Batman Returns. Um, the plan was to release it during Batman Returns 30th anniversary in 2022. But I would have rather if, it didn't. Keep, if this film had released, then people would have been like, yes, I'm sorry, Ben Affleck and everyone else. We really enjoyed you as Batman, but I'm sorry, we're gonna go with Keaton for a while. Like, well, Keaton was gonna show up at the end he and all kinds of stuff. It. He just owned the whole movie, and that would have been, yeah. I mean, I can imagine. It's it's hard for Ben Affleck's Batman to to stand up to Keaton's in this movie. Yeah, because like, Keaton, he, I mean, Ben Affleck's is brutal, but Keaton is like all strategic. inspiring, like. He's, he's calculated. He's a calculated Batman. Like, he, he you know, I wouldn't say he plans it's, things out, but he calculates things. It's like, it's like watching a Batman that maybe he's not as bulky, but he has tons of experience, and he knows exactly what he's doing. Like, he knows everything. He's definitely an experienced Batman, you could tell. So, um, as you guys knew from the trailer, they broke in, they rescued uh, Supergirl. Um... I'm not really going to explain how uh, Barry gets his abilities back, but um, eventually the team ends up, you know, coming to the conclusion that this new Justice League needs, needs to take on Zot. So Barry got his powers back, uh, Supergirl is on board, and Keaton is like, you know what? It's the end of the world anyway, so you want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. <laughs> and, uh, you know... They, they decide that, okay, we're going to go and literally attack Zod. Because basically, Barry tells them from the Man of Steel movie that, well, you know, Kal-El was supposed to uh, meet up with Zod to prevent all this massacre that's happening all over the world. Because Zod is using the world engine to destroy the Earth. So, uh, yeah. Metropolis is gone in this one. Metropolis, I believe, gets, like, terror, terror zapped or nuked or whatever. Um, parts yeah. of the world are already getting vaporized by the different machines at Zod because Superman stopped everything. Yeah, it's almost like this whole, like, looking back on watching it, it's almost like the feeling you get is that all this stuff was supposed to have been present prevented. Why is all this horrible stuff happening? It's almost like the world is broken. Like, there's something really wrong with this timeline. Like, everything isn't making sense. Nothing is working how it's supposed to. You know, like, in other timelines, it's like, oh, no worries, every time something bad happens, a ray of hope appears. But in this timeline, there's no ray of hope. There's no counterbalance to the evil that's coming on it. It's almost like the timeline is something wrong with it. Like, the timeline is cursed or it's messed up for some reason. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, and we all know what, why, because Barry, you know... Met, change things yep Super you can be a uh, flash or batman or whatever you want to be like it's it's your I'll call be, uh, uh well how, much, how many more rounds are we doing uh we're not really doing rounds okay, we're just kind of we're, okay. we're on the third act all right so i'll do this for a while and then i'll go back to flash we're on the third act and then we're gonna get into the spoiler section i'm okay. gonna arkham uh, oh my gosh. So, let's see. They all decide that they're going to go and kind of like a... I, I really wanted Keaton to say, so we're like a suicide squad. But he doesn't. He doesn't, because he's like, so if we're not a Justice League, what are we? And I was just... If they say the Suicide Squad, that would have been a fitting name. But I think they said they were kind of like the Justice League, because they were bringing justice. They didn't, they didn't really admit to it, though. What? Yeah, one. It gets I, it gets brought up, but they don't really. One thing I like you were mentioning with Keaton, while I'll say from the beginning was he said how great a, a leader he was and everything. 
or of how great Batman was in his universe, but how he explained to him that Batman was the leader of all these meta humans in his universe. That was it. Yeah, Keaton that, was a, like a follower though. Yeah. He was just like another soldier. He, he didn't yeah. he didn't the, call the shots or I anything. I think like Keaton act he kind of like worked alone also. Well, yeah, he was a solo guy working with like you know yeah. super powered beings. But anyway, I'll let you talk about the third act. Sorry about that. All right, so the the Zod stuff. Um, Zod, uh, uh, I, I guess Michael Shannon was okay in this, but he was definitely better in Man of Steel. Like, he kind of mm, moves around kind of sluggish. Uh, he looks like he has CGI face half the time to make him look younger, and it just doesn't work. Like, they're trying to make Michael Shannon look like Michael Shannon from 2013, and it was, the CGI was kind of iffy if they were doing that. Um, his Kryptonian suit looks ridiculous in the movie, too. Like, it, I think that he looked better before. Um, Aww. because he actually takes off his Kryptonian suit when he was fighting, um, Superman. He was wearing, like, a black Superman costume, like Zod was. It looked better. Oh, yeah. Uh, instead he's wearing, like, basically, like, this really weird, you know, alien armor thing the whole time, and it just looks really clunky and dumb. Which is why, you know, the Kryptonians don't wear it the whole time in the Man of Steel movie. So maybe Andy forgot that part. Uh, the third act is a lot of Batman doing stuff from the air, which they don't really show you from the trailer. They make you think that Batman's actually on the ground fighting Kryptonians, which wouldn't make any sense because, I mean, they're Kryptonian. Um, it's actually the Flashes that are fighting a lot. And uh, that sequence was really cool, but sometimes the CGI was a little iffy. It, it, I wouldn't put it in the same category as the CW, because the CW is terrible CGI. But I, I would say that the CGI looks like a PlayStation 5 video game sometimes. Wow. Which is good, but it's not something that should have been in a, a really big movie like this. So I, that made me kind of stir in my seat a little bit. When they were doing, like, the really... Gr Especially when they're fighting, like, all these enemies at once. It's like the CGI is very apparent. And it's it's yeah. very video gamey. Well, yeah, I have really low standards Super for CGI. Wind. So I, I liked everything. I liked the movie. I didn't even notice. I guess I just don't even notice graphics very much at all. But, yeah, I, I guess everyone else did. Um, whenever <sighs> we see Batman in the Batwing, um, they play the classic, like, Batman march. And he did things in his new Batwing that I didn't, I really didn't think Keaton was that good of a pilot before. Like, I thought he was just this rich guy in an airplane. And I kid you not, like, Batman 89 or Returns or Keaton Batman, whatever you want to call him. Like, the man is like Top Gun. Like, literally shooting down Kryptonian yeah. ships like it's nothing. Yeah, he was as formidable in a plane as he is on the ground. It was incredible. I was like, maybe that's he why... Was, he like Top Gun. I yeah. think that's why Tom Cruise had nothing but good things to say about <gasps> The Flash, is when it came to... Yeah, the flight stuff. The flight amazing. stuff, yeah. Yeah. That was very impressive. Oh, Tom Cruise liked the movie? Oh, wow. I yep, loved Tom. Yep, Tom Cruise liked The Flash. Wow, I liked it, too. Yay, Tom Cruise liked it. That now I know great. why he liked it, though, is because of Batman's insane aerial acrobatics oh. at the end of the movie. It's, it's that, but the whole story is good. Like, besides the CGI being a little... People say it's CGI. If you just focus on the story and not the CGI, the whole story, there's, like, nothing wrong with it. Like, the story is funny. Yeah, the story it, is good. good. Okay, so uh, Batman kicks butt in the air, and Kara uh, really tore it up on the ground. Um, not as much as Henry Cavill uh, did when he was fighting the Kryptonian. She kind of struggled yeah. a bit, but um, in Kara's defense, she is Flashpoint Superman. And just to give you guys like a little bit of background, uh, the Flashpoint world is a world where Barry in the comics went back in time and saved his mom from dying. In so, he created a world where Wonder Woman and Aquaman were at war with one another in evil. Superman never happened to give the world something to strive for and hope for. Like, to, to look up to this being that had these amazing powers and gifts that wanted to help humanity. He was locked up in a U.S. prison. Like, ever since, like, he crash-landed in Smallville. 
So he was a, a U.S. government, like, pet project that nobody knew yeah. about. Um, Aquaman and, and uh, Wonder Woman had a falling out because uh, they were promised to wed, and his current wife, Mira, wasn't too thrilled with that. So Wonder Woman and Mira ended up fighting to the death, and, of course, Wonder Woman killed Mira, which led to the wow. uh, Atlantean and Amazonian Civil War. And in Wonder Woman's own twisted mind, she was in love with Arthur. Which is even weirder. So the the political marriage was actually something she was looking forward to because she loved him, but he loved Mira, and when Wonder Woman yeah. killed Mira, it you know set off a chain of events and Supergirl the world was at war and it was basically like post-apocalyptic thing. You had Thomas Wayne as Batman, Bruce was dead as a child, Martha Aww. was um, Martha Wayne yeah. was the Joker. So, so long story short, basically the reason why. Uh, Kara cannot fight nearly as well as, as Henry. Superman is because she probably could have fought pretty close to him, except for the fact that she had no exposure to the sun for so many years, so she was extremely weak. Um, yeah. If she had been soaking the sun in her whole life instead of being stuck in a prison without it, then she probably would have been able to be like 98% as strong as Superman or at least 80% instead of right now in the movie. I would say she's about 60%. Yeah, it's like she's only 60% of what she really should be as a Kryptonian. She, she and Zod are kind of on even playing field, which you definitely get to see. Um, so... Yeah, like if she had been... That's so interesting Luke was explaining to me on the way home that Superman, the reason why he became so strong compared to Zod is he was soaking off the sun for so many years. Yeah, all his life, you know? Even before his superpowers started to manifest. Yeah. But we, we saw him, which was weird for Zack Snyder to do this, but basically in the Man of Steel movie, why a lot of people like it, you're actually getting kind of a Batman movie too. I hate to tell people this, but the way that Superman was traveling the world and training himself and, you know, doing all these things. It was like he was Batman. It like he was Batman. Yeah. That's yeah. It, it was like it was, it was like Zack Snyder was like, I really wanted to do a Batman movie and they gave me Superman. Oh. So <laughs> we're going to have Superman travel the world and find himself. <laughs> yeah, but... But even in Lois and Clark, Superman uh, did say that he had been uh, across the world and learned a lot of, about different cultures. Yeah, I know, but it, but it's... he didn't do it quite like Batman did, no. where he forced himself to. They've be they even had him. They had him. Uh, if I remember correctly, in Man of Steel, he was in Tibet at one point too. So he was he was doing all kinds he was of weird doing stuff. Doing everything that yeah, Batman would do. Yeah. But you know, he was he was doing like year one uh, Batman stuff. <laughs> but the most important thing is, you know, he'd been soaking up the sun the whole time. So when it came to battling Zod, he had an advantage. But Zod was actually getting stronger in their fight in Man of Steel because he was a military guy that had more combat experience than Kal El. Yeah. So even though Kal El was a more powerful, imposing character because you know he had been having his powers longer, Zod was learning how to use his powers faster because of his combat abilities, which definitely during the fight with Kara, you can see this happen. As he's fighting Kara, he's getting accustomed, almost like he's a Saiyan. He's, he's yes. getting, he's Zod getting knocked like around and then he's able to, to turn the tables. But, um, yeah. let's, let's get into the spoiler section now. So you can basically play as whoever you want. Okay. We're going to go to oh. any, any of the, the characters because we're going to go into spoilers. Okay. Okay. So this is the spoiler section if you guys want to uh, jump out of the review or whatever you want to do. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Spoiler section. Spoilers! We need a spoiler, Jeff. We don't have a spoiler, Jeff. We, we could do a warning. Where's our warning thing? The Flash. Ah! There you go. There we go. Warning! Spoilers! Or whatever. Oh. It won't let me do it on and off. There we go. Okay. okay, guys, spoiler section. This is a spoiler section. Okay. Uh, no easy way to say this. Um, basically, they kill off both Kara and Keaton. Um, in a pretty... I, I would say fantastic way. Like, uh, the way... Pretty brutal. It's pretty brutal, yeah. It was, and, uh, I was surprised. I, from what I heard... They were going to, I think Luke was telling me this, or I don't know, that they were going to kill them off 
multiple times. Yes. Yeah, they were gonna uh, kill. We were gonna see the death scenes multiple they, times. They they cut out they cut out some stuff because it was in the test screenings. And, they showed multiple deaths. Yeah. Yeah, basically, like, and I actually, I'm not trying to be dark, but I kind of wanted to see that. I think it would have made the world more dark and gritty, seeing people die over and over and over Finders again to the point where you realize, oh my gosh, this world is just not cannot be saved. Yeah. I think, and then, yeah, so... There was, there was, uh, they, they cut out, um, uh, some of the deaths. They kept, like, the, the two probably most significant ones. Um, both Keaton's deaths are hardcore. One of them is lame, that gets retconned, thankfully. Mm, yeah. The, the one where he thinks he's gonna take out the Kryptonian battlecruiser, and he's all calm. It's like, it, it, it reminded me of, um, the sequence with, uh... In Batman Returns, where he's like, now I'm a little worried, and he can't get the um, the Batmobile to transform, oh, like yeah. in, into that bullet thing. So we, we see more of the human aspect, but also it was kind of somber too, because he realized there's no coming back from this. I can't eject because right. my ejector thing is fried. Um, so he tries to to kamikaze and take out Zod's ship and save the day, but <laughs> Zod Zod had his shields on the ship. Oh, so the yeah. the Batwing just kind of vaporizes into nothing. It doesn't do, do any damage to the flagship at all. And that, if that was Keaton's only death, I would have been devastated because it was like yeah, such a lame so way for him to go. I was like, oh. Yeah, I mean, you definitely get the. It's. I mean, I I almost felt it was gonna become like Groundhog Day, where you see somebody die over and over and over. Yeah, over I think again. that's what they were were trying to do. Um, but of course that gets retconned. Um, and they, they go back again, and, uh, Barry's like, okay, you know, if I just change this a little bit, then Batman will probably survive, which, I don't even know how they think, like, that was gonna work anyway, because, I mean, Bruce is a, a human fighting these Kryptonian guys who are mopping the floor with all the humans that are fighting. Like, it, Ke yeah. there's no way Keaton's gonna live through this battle anyway. And... Yeah, now I finally understand the super chat that Galen was saying where it's like Endgame because Endgame, you had to go back in time and everything was hopeless. And then you had to go back in time. Yeah. So in a way, it was like that, but yeah. Yeah, but time travel in the MCU is a, is a lot gentler than it is in the DC Universe. <laughs> yeah, this was hard for it, it didn't work the way that they wanted. So, uh, Future Barry is like, okay, you go help Kara, who ends up getting impaled by Zod. Uh, which, I, I'm just gonna ask people this, because I don't remember Man of Steel. Did Zod have a scorpion spike thingy in <laughs> yeah, Man of Steel? And if so, why didn't he just stab Henry the way that he stabs Kara? I thought he had, like, an Assassin's Creed blade. That's yeah, did he have, like. did he have the hidden, was that I new? I thought he was Ezio, like. Was, was that new, or did he have it in Man of Steel? That was weird. I was like, wait, he had this the whole time? He could have easily killed Superman. He killed Jor-El with it. Oh, but I don't understand. So he did he try to kill Superman? Did he with try it? to kill Superman with it? But then it, maybe it didn't work on Superman. Mm. He killed Jor El with it, right? But what happened to it after he killed Jor El with it? Maybe he lost it or something. Did they just forget about it, like during the fight with Superman? Because I mean. Zod uses that like stabby thing it's like a lot. Thing it's like his main just, weapon. It's just like, oh, well, I'm getting beat into a pulp. Okay, and I have my trump card. Stabby stab. It's like okay. And there's Superman trying to get out. So this is basically what the movie was about. Yeah, really. the Red Sun Prison. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Anyway, yeah. So um, Keaton, like, he comes back, uh, and Barry's like, you know. That, uh, I noticed that the shields are up on that ship, Bruce. You might not want to attack it. And Bruce is like, roger that. But he says, ooh, you could go after the big one. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'll go after that big Kryptonian. And then he has, like, this intense, like, fight in the air, like the dog fight with this Kryptonian that's just learning his powers. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, he ends up destroying the Batwing. But, like, you know, thinking he got the Kryptonian. The Kryptonian survives. And Batman's just kind of like, okay, well, let's see how this guy deals with explosions. So he puts all these bombs all over um, this giant Kryptonian guy. And uh, unfortunately, like, the Kryptonian guy, like, body slams. Like, he bodies Batman. Yeah. And that's, that's what kills him is because, like, his suit 
while his suit is um, able to deal with ballistic damage and it's able to uh, deal with um, knife stuff, mm -hmm. it doesn't have like the shock absorption in it the way that Ben Affleck's bat suit does, who has fought a Kryptonian. Yeah. So when he gets thrown by the Kryptonian, that's it. Like every bone in his body is broken. Like, he, yeah, that's right. He doesn't have, like, padding no. and shock absorption. He has no way to absorb the shock of that, yeah. He has a bulletproof uh, cape, but not a Kryptonian proof. Like. No, because, I mean, there there was no way to per, uh, prepare for Kryptonian aliens. There's, yeah. there's no way you would know what their uh, weaknesses are or He's anything. He's never experienced it before. Like, uh, Ben Affleck Batman had time to look at, you know, dead Kryptonians and to study things and craft his suits and all kinds of things. You know, have the kryptonite weapon. He went in, like, fully prepared. Mm -hmm. um, but Keaton, you know, was like, screw it, and he found his own way of doing stuff, which was kind of cool. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, he didn't, he didn't survive that encounter. So, uh, the berries basically get into this really big heated fight in the time, like, force or speed force, whatever you want to call it. Okay. And, uh, Barry comes to a realization that, hey, you know, this is kind of like a canon event. If you guys know what that means, um, then, yeah, Man. go with it. And, uh, the other Barry is like, no, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't believe that. I can save my friends, because, you know... Other Barry, future Barry is not really necessarily friends with these people. Like, they're important to him. But to this new Barry that, you know, is a superhero to this world, that would be his Justice League. That would be his Batman. That would be his Superman. Um, so he, he's starting to really care for these people. Like, they're his friends. So he wants to do whatever he can to, you know, save the day and save his friends and keep his world safe. And. Uh, older Flash realizes, hey, you know, your world is kind of doomed. I have to go back and make sure that Mom dies. Uh, because that's the only way to prevent billions of people being wiped out by Zod. Yeah. And it, it's a very dark realization that Barry had to have. Yeah. For that to happen. Yeah, and I think, like, they... I think it would have been better if they had had people die more times, and then he would have understood, like, oh, yeah, this is doomed. They had Supergirl dying, like, hundreds they of different have... ways in weird CGI in they the did... Speed Force. Oh, yeah, was... that's right, in the Speed Force. It looks really bad. Yeah, but I think they did have Supergirl die, like, several times in the in the movie. Yes, like, they, kept, they kept three or four they of her deaths. They kept her deaths, but they didn't keep the, a lot of Keaton's. They only showed two of Keaton's deaths, yeah. He had I think, more. I think it would have been harder to see Keaton die multiple times since he was... We only got to see... We only... Supergirl was only in this movie for a short time. I feel like she didn't have a lot of talking and screen time. Like, she had a lot of action. Mm -hmm. But we didn't really get to see her personality. Like, there was no levity or joking around from Supergirl at all. No. She was basically tortured her whole life, which... I really think uh, that's why I said when people said what do you think of Supergirl I said I was surprised because I think Sasha Kaye did such an amazing job like I thought she would just be like you know the last Supergirl I th saw was a CW was Supergirl always. who was like oh my gosh I'm not being paid a raise because I forgot a coffee oh you know like Nobody, no, like, problems nobody cares about. Like, first world problems, Supergirl, that I don't want to watch. Sasha Kaye was a Supergirl that was basically dead inside, tortured to death, and extremely scary. Like, I thought she was going to actually... When she first came out of there, and, like, she was basically... She looked dead. Like, I thought she was dead when they when they got her out of there. When they got her out of the Red and, Sun Yeah, it was prison. freaky. Yeah. The, it was, it was like, almost like it became a horror movie. Like, I was actually scared to death. Because Batman was being, like, arrested by these... Uh, Batman and Barry and everyone. Because Barry couldn't really... You guys have to remember, when they got Supergirl out of there... You have to realize that they were all shot up with bullets. Um, they were literally, they barely made it out of there, which was an amazing scene. They made it look so real. Like you were, it was really three guys invading an industrial complex of, you know, this extremely heavily guarded area, which it was almost a miracle. They got Supergirl out of there. And that's why it was so intense. But really it was one Barry that could barely use his powers. Second Barry who had lost his powers. 
And then Michael Keaton, who's literally had not been really doing his super stuff for a long time. And basically, they barely made it out with this... They thought it was going to be Superman, but it wasn't. They realized, oh, they almost left. They no, almost left. Ke Keaton wasn't going to leave her. He Barry, wasn't. No. Oh. I mean, any any superpowered being is better than no superpowered being. But I thought at one point people were going to leave, and then Barry said, "No, I, we should take her." Or something. And I'm I'm just going to interrupt you. Uh, yeah. When you said that it looked like Keaton hadn't done it for a while, no, Keaton, even though he had been retired for like. Probably four or five years yeah. in that continuity. He knew exactly what he was doing. You're right because yeah, actually I will take that back because the, he was going to beat them up in the in the uh, breakfast nook. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. he could do. I mean, I think that if the movie takes place in the year 2013 for Keaton, that would make him about uh, his Batman would have been 70, 74, 73. Yeah. You know, he was getting up there in years. Yeah. And uh, when he was ha hacking the um, the Russian base or whatever, he was using a BlackBerry flip phone that was from the year 2003. Mm. So that means that the last time that his Batman equipment had been updated was probably around 2003, 2005. So he had probably been retired since, like, around 2006. Yeah. By the time 2013 had come around. Well... Yeah, well, anyways, um, yeah, when she, that was one of my favorite scenes in the whole movie where she was lying there, basically dead. And then he, one of my favorite lines was Keaton looked and he said, Now we have to hope we don't die. And I thought, Oh, yeah, there's all these guys with guns on you. And then it's like, Oh, wait, you see, and then it flips right to Kara and she starts waking up. And then she starts getting really angry and killing everyone extremely violently. And then I was like, oh my gosh. Like, wait, Keaton was saying he hopes that Kara doesn't kill them because he knows that she's crazy. Right? That's what he was saying. Like, I hope we don't die. Like, what does that, what does that mean? Like, he knew that she was, like, out of control. No. Like, I thought she was going to kill all of them because after she was done killing the guard, she looked at them really angrily and I was like, we are going to die now. She's going to kill us all. Like, she was very intense. That's not the impression I got from Kara. Oh, like, wow. at that scene. No, she was going to pay them back for saving her. It was the people with the guns that were a problem. The people in the colorful costumes were the one who got her out, and they so weren't. So she could tell the difference because yeah. it looked like she wasn't thinking straight nope. at all. No, she could tell. Okay. She could tell. All right. So, uh, big spoiler stuff. So they're in the Speed Force, and uh, basically Barry is getting ready to go back in time, and uh, you know, fix the Lord of Tomatoes so that the mom uh, doesn't make it. And uh, then Barry meets the real villain of the movie, which is the Black Flash. Which, we don't find out who the person is responsible for killing Flash's mom in the first place. Because they never find the assailant. Andy was actually building toward a sequel, which we're not going to get. Uh, where the reverse Flash was going to be introduced in the second movie as the murderer of Nora. Um, mm. and so, like, everything that the Flash went through in the first movie by time travel and... Wiping out from existence Henry Cavill, Superman, and all this other stuff. Yeah. Um, it was all the reverse Flash is doing. At least that's what how Andy was going to tie everything together. But in this world, big spoiler, uh, basically the second Barry, the, the cute, you know, funny one, turns out to be the Syndrome. Uh, in fact, there's even a line in the movie where he's getting ready to kill himself. And he's like, you were my hero, Barry. And it's like, oh my gosh, they turned evil Black Flash, basically like Sal Salvatore or whatever, Salvatore. Yeah, he does look like Salvatore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he looked like that CW evil Barry. Yeah. And uh, he, I was waiting for him to say, after all, I am your biggest fan. But he says, you know, you are my hero. So it was around the same thing. And... Uh, Barry is pleading with the guy like you don't understand like the multiverse is literally crashing around us and that's when we get all the cameos but the only cameos that I really saw in there that um, were very apparent was they showed a lot of dead actors they brought back the original uh, Superman from the uh, 
like the Adventures of Superman from the 1950s. Mm -hmm. They showed him. Yeah. Uh, George the, Reeves. George okay. Reeves. They showed um, uh, Christopher Reeves, mm -hmm. and they showed the lady who played Supergirl, who's still alive. The lady from the 80s. The, yeah. Because but... everybody forgets that the blonde Supergirl was actually a movie in the 1980s. I forgot that. It was a movie. Um, it was Supergirl the movie that was tied into the Christopher Christopher Reeves universe, but um, they never met because he had stopped being Superman at that point. Oh, wow. Interesting. And her movie did so badly that there was never a Supergirl 2. Yeah. So... Um, they had her in it, and the CGI looked okay. It actually, that's, uh, mm, they didn't look like real, though. They looked like PlayStation 5 CGI. So the whole Speed Force stuff looked like PlayStation 5 high-end graphics, like from a yeah. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth uh, animated cutscenes. Yeah. It would have been nice if they showed Henry Henry Cavill at that point more and Nope. Some of the old like maybe even like the Snyderverse or something, but no. They showed Adam West, another dead actor. Um which he looked weird in it. Uh they showed what's his face? Um they showed the guy from the CW as uh Jay Garrick, but it wasn't um they didn't show Grant. They they showed Jay Garrick Flash in a uh, cosmic 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 treadmill, mm -hmm. very briefly, which is weird because the guy who played uh, Jay Garrick didn't even you know play Jay Garrick in the CW. He played Zoom, mm -hmm. which was weird, but it is what it is. But anyway, yeah, that was a very long sequence of a lot of. It was it was a a, a very long sequence with all that stuff, and then. So, uh, who else did they show that was monumental? Uh, Mo, I remember the the best uh, thing that they did is they showed a Superman that actually got some applause in our theater, even though it was a 10 a.m. theater thing. Uh, um, GL's not in that. Oh, I know. I'm just trying to. Batman. Let's see where is is this. I'm gonna my... be I'm gonna be Supergirl because I gonna be like Supergirl. Movie. Yeah, go for it. Be Supergirl. Supergirl. Okay. And we'll go to the Fortress of Solitude because they... Oh, never mind. The game's going to pick for us. That's fine. Uh, they they showed uh, Nicolas Cage as a Superman uh, based on his um, Superman movie that never got made. And he fought a giant mechanical space spider. And he looked pretty good. In fact, Nicolas Cage kind of was the one who let the secret out of a bag, though. Because when he was doing interviews, they were like... I think it was like one of those Google videos, like Nicolas Cage Googles himself. And uh, it was a year before the movie came out. And he was doing, I, I don't know, some type of movie during the pandemic. I, I don't know. I, I don't really watch a lot of Nicolas Cage's movies. He let something slip that is like the, the mother of all, um, you know, spoilers. But he was, he was doing this Google React thing, and this question came up like... Um, if you ever got to, to play Superman, uh, or something, and he was like, hmm, he says, would it matter how long I get to play the character? And people were like, what? Uh, what is, what is Nicolas Cage talking about? And they're like, oh, it's just Nicolas Cage being Nicolas Cage. Like, it, it doesn't, he's, he's just, he's not being coherent, he's just being Nick Cage. And he literally told people what he did, like, almost two years before the movie came out. Yeah. He just didn't care. He was just like, would it matter how long I play the character? <laughs> you know? Yeah. I was like, what? Uh, well, how long have we gone and how many more minutes do we have to talk about the rest of the plot? We're we're almost done. Okay, because we, we missed the whole plot point of even why Barry had to have even tomato soup or anything. Okay, I I was getting to it. Okay. All right. You said so, we're almost done, though. So that means. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess you guys will have to watch. I don't think Luke's gonna say every plot point then. No, I'm not gonna say every plot point. Okay. All right. All right. I'm sorry. I didn't no. mean to. I'll just rude. keep. How is it rude? I was just wondering. I was just trying to keep you on track. I don't know how. No, long you're keeping me on track. That's fine. That's I'm fine. Not being rude. All right. Anyway, so the the whole Nick Cage thing was pretty cool, and uh, basically. Like, I won't spoil the ending ending, 
but Barry somehow is able to defeat the Savator guy. Um, like the, whatever he is, you call him Evil Flash, Black Flash, Dark Flash, whatever his name is, Mutant Flash. It's, it's Flash wearing a outfit that looks like he's from the, the underwater ship in the Pirates of the Caribbean. It's all, he's all crusted over and stuff with like a black outfit. Yeah, 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 he does, he does look like that. So, uh, then, more or less, uh, he has to go back in time again to where the, originally the timelines intersected. And he goes back to the whole tomato can incident. And, uh, he meets his mom, and he tells her he's sad because he met his mom, and, you know, uh, it was good to see her again, and, you know, he looks very broken up. And they have a moment, it's very tender and sweet, and, uh, he then basically takes away the magical tomato can uh but he still right can't help can't messing stop. with time I'm that he positions the tomato can that his dad is searching for so that his dad has to look up on the camera because the tomato can is responsible for everything yeah it, it is the most powerful being in the dc cinematic universe the past 10 yeah, years because like it literally one tomato can wiped out the entire multiverse one tomato can erase from existence Ben Affleck. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, yep. Yeah, so oh, the tomato can represents the salary dispute and all the people. T tomato can represents everything bad at DC. Yeah, but yeah, so that was a really great ending, I think, it was perfect because I think it would have been very hard to leave the ending of the thing where his dad is still like people are like well some things just can't be fixed and just thinking like oh okay i guess my dad's just gonna have to be in prison forever and my life's just gonna be terrible with people always because in part of the movie even iris west and also some of his friends or quote-unquote friends who were kind of jerks to him were not even believing him about his dad and it was like he was completely alone no one believed him that his dad was innocent he was alone working, he was alone without friends, he was alone in the Justice League, even when he tried to ask Batman to hang out, Batman didn't have time. So Barry was basically alone all the time, and so it completely made sense that, you know, no one believed him about his dad, it made sense that he would go and try to, um, you know, change the timeline, and then at the very end, it's like he has to realize he had to do it. So it's like it made sense that he would put the tomato can on the top thing because it's the only thing he could do to somewhat fix something since he'd already been in time so long. He was able to fix one thing and that was that his dad could look up at the security camera and that was his alibi proving yep. that his dad was not his dad was not in the house when his mother was stabbed. His dad was actually at a convenience store a little bit away getting tomatoes. And it is, had the time and the date. And because they were able to tell the time of death when his mother was stabbed, then they were able to see that, yes, at that time of death, he was actually at a convenience store getting tomatoes. Yep. So for, I don't know, 20, 30, whatever years. Probably about 15 years. Like, his dad was wrongfully accused of a crime he didn't commit. Finally, he was able to get his dad acquitted. Yep. At the end of the movie, spoilers, and then... We're still in the spoiler section. Unfortunately, because I think it's because he switched the, where the tomato can was, I personally think that if he had not switched where the tomato can was, then maybe Keaton would have come back at the end. But because he switched where the tomato can was, then we got a different Batman at the end. Nope. That's what I if, think. If he, he would have kept the tomato can exactly where it was and his dad stayed in jail, you would have gotten Ben Affleck Batman. Oh. So in order to get Ben Affleck Batman back, he has to go back in time and he has to make sure that the tomato can is put in its rightful place as omnipotent tomato can. But then his dad would be in prison. But then his dad would be in prison for the rest of his sentence. So unfortunately, at the end of the film, spoilers, basically what I really hate and what I really wanted to see was another version of Keaton, which Luke said was the original, what they were going to do, mm -hmm. which would have been fantastic, and I would have loved that. However, they decided to do something stupid, and at the end of the thing, he's like, oh my gosh, like his dad is acquitted, and then he's 
you know, in a good mood, and then it's like, oh, here's someone I know, and this billionaire part uh, drives up in this beautiful car. Ben Affleck's and car. And there's somebody coming out to step out of it, and it's think you're thinking, oh my gosh, are we gonna see Ben Affleck or are we gonna see Keaton? Which one is it? And he looks over at him, and this guy steps out, who's neither of those. And shakes his hand like, oh, hi, Barry. And he's like, oh, you're not what I was expecting. And I think he said that because I think the audience wasn't expecting it either. He also says, you're not Batman. And then he's like, what's wrong with you, Barry? Because they're out in the middle of the day and they're surrounded by the press. And Barry just doesn't care. He's like, what? Oh, right. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and spoiler, should I say who it is, or should I wait? Yeah, for it's the spoiler. So, yeah, this is a spoiler section. So, the Batman at the end is, guess who? It's George Clooney. Mm. And I think that's why he says, like, you're not Batman, because... We don't, we don't want to consider George Clooney as Batman. I think it was like a, I think it was like a fourth wall thing saying, you're not Batman. This can't be happening. Like, why? So the George Clooney thing, how it happened was, is Peter Saffron and James Gunn approached George Clooney and they had to take, um, not only did they have to remove Sasha Kaye and Michael Keaton from the end, but they had Henry Cavill at the end of the movie, too, along with Gal Gadot, all congratulating Barry at the courthouse. Mm. And then the final character that was going to show up was going to be Michael Keaton, um, which would be a new Michael Keaton, but it would still be Michael Keaton because since the tomato can was moved, some things changed from the original universe. That right. w- One thing being, of course, that you know Ben Affleck was gone. So we'll, we'll represent that as George Clooney there. Ha 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 ha. Yeah. It was George. And what we're so mad about, Luke and I are mad about, is he didn't even shave to look he like He didn't Batman. even shave. He didn't even look like Bruce Wayne. He was just like, hey, sup. It just looked like he walked out of the Oscars or something. It was like, oh, I guess I'm getting $150 million to step over here for a second, and then I'll go to my next film. Like, I don't know. It was super and kind of annoying. Begin. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. So uh, a little background on the whole Clooney thing is for years he's been trying to find a way, whether voicing Batman or appearing in a video game, whatever. He wants to put all the pain aside that he caused the fandom because he is. He says he's a fan of Batman. I still think it was just a job to him. I don't think so because otherwise he would have shaved off. <laughs> You know, but apparently he saw one of the test screenings for The Flash. This is this is how the rumor goes of how he ended up in the movie. He saw the room like the one of the test screenings, and he loved The Flash. He thought it was really interesting. It was a cool superhero movie. I uh, thought both Ben and Keaton were great in the movie. He was friends with Ben. I don't know if he's friends with Keaton. I don't think so. Keaton's kind of aloof. Keaton doesn't really hang out in Hollywood and all this other stuff. Yeah. Ben's kids know George's kids, etc. You know, Bale, George, and Ben are all really close ex Batman. Like they, you know, they they hang out on occasion. Yeah. Um, so George was already like, okay, the movie's good. And they were like, well, uh, I think it was Peter Saffron was the one who approached him. And he was like, well, we need to reshoot the ending because we can't have, obviously, you know, these characters anymore because they're not going to show up in our universe. Ugh. So, and then just, they were also letting him know that his cameo didn't necessarily mean that he would be back to play Batman. Right. It was kind of like a, a both a, a poke at the audience as well as a reminder to Barry that he's not in his timeline. Mm. Yeah, he's in a completely new one. And George loved the idea, and he's like, okay. He's like, I get to come back and play Bruce Wayne in a in a cool role, and uh, I don't have to wear the suit, and I just only show up for a little bit of filming. He and Ezra, like, hung out uh, that day to get some type of chemistry. Yeah. So it felt kind of natural, like he was supposed to be, like, the Ben Affleck Batman. Right. Um... And that was that. You know, they shot the one sequence, uh, and George did it, and George had a lot of fun on set. And then immediately when the rumors started, this is why I love James Gunn, though. Immediately when the rumors started that um, George Clooney was going to be the Batman that ended up being in in, um, James Gunn's universe, 
He took to Twitter and he went specifically to Grace Randolph. And because she was like, well, I have a, a huge scoop that George Clooney, the Batman who shows up at the end of The Flash, is going to be the Batman in, in, the, in James Gunn's new universe with a son. And James Gunn was like, that's fake news. And he's like, um, George Clooney staying on as our Batman is false. It'll be a new actor. Yeah. So the George Clooney thing is just kind of like both a, a, a joke to the audience. It's like a troll. It's a troll because people are expecting to see Michael Keaton because Michael Keaton was supposed to be the Batman going forward. I was expecting to see, after all the chemistry with between between the two Barrys and Michael Keaton, which basically the whole film, Sasha Kai is in part of it. I would say Sasha Kai is in a little bit of it. Ben Affleck's in a little bit of it. Wonder Woman is very few in it. But the main film is two berries and, and, and Michael Keaton. That's the three people in the film. Yep. That's the three guys are two berries and Michael Keaton. And so I really thought at the end it would have been a great closure thing to have Michael Keaton come back. That was the plan because he was going to be Batman for the next five years or yeah. something like that. Or it was an, like it, an aging Batman. If you watch the movie, then you feel like, oh, you're expecting it to be Michael Keaton. Like, it feels like it's, it's going to be him. Like, you just have this feeling. George Clooney will still be in Aquaman 2? I doubt it. Uh, uh, well, James Gunn said it's not the Batman going he's forward. Not, he's not the Batman going forward. Like, also, I think it's just a troll thing. We don't really man. have time to talk about it, but Wonder Woman was in the movie, and she was awesome, like, in the first arc. She shows up at the very end and saves um, Ben Affleck, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. You you can say nope. whatever your thoughts are, nope, sweetheart. No, I'm good. So, um, anyway, people, that's The Flash. Uh, hopefully this was a, a fun little thing for you guys. And uh, I'll have a more um, detailed uh, video on the one channel in a few days. Um, I'm actually going to get to... I'm, I'm kind of have. I haven't really slept much, so I'm going to get some rest. And Amber's going to handle your Pokemon stream tonight. Um, thank you so much for watching, everybody. We hope you had fun. And uh, I will see you guys at 10 in the morning with uh, Nintendo Direct. And uh, there will be no Final Fantasy 16 at 10 in the morning. Um, that won't be until the after uh, the evening. Um, so Yeah, let us know in the comments what you guys thought of The Flash. And, um, you know, if you haven't seen the movie yet, what, you know, if you think you're going to see it or, you know, what you thought about anything uh, having to do with the DC Universe. So, yeah. All right, guys, Pokemon will be starting up in about 15 minutes. Thanks so much, and uh, I'll see you guys in the morning with uh, the Nintendo Direct.